Uh, new public hearings. New public hearings. Uh, public hearing for zoning ordinance amendments. Uh, item one. Amend Article Two districts in the following manner: change a portion of the business seasonal BS zoning district district to the business seasonal subdistrict BSS. Revise the zoning map to incorporate the business seasonal subdistrict. Amend Article Three, use regulations, to add a new use regulation, Section 3.44.1, for 25 feet of depth on the ground floor of any building measured from the front of a structure to a non-residential principal use permitted in the business seasonal BS district. Amend Article 4, Dimensional Requirements Table to add the proposed business seasonal district rec requirements which include a building height allowance of 70 feet with the exception of unoccupied architectural appurtenances which may exceed, extend to a point no greater than 80 feet in height. Structures would be prohibited from casting shadows on the sand on the, of the, on the easterly side of Ocean Boulevard prior to 6 p.m. from May 15th through September 1st. Mark. Hello. Um, my name is Mark Gerald. I'm the town attorney for the town of Hampton. And uh, with the board's permission, I have asked two speakers to come tonight who, would, who have a particular uh, expertise that I would appreciate the board hearing regarding the issue of, of height. Uh, the first one is uh, Carl McMorrin, who is the operations manager for Aquarian Water Company of New Hampshire, which is our supplier of, of, of uh, uh, water in Hampton for uh, as a system. Uh, he holds a bachelor's degree in biology from Bucknell University, a master of environmental science degree from Miami U University. <coughs> Uh, he has worked for Aquarian since November of 2008, but prior to that time served in various capacities for public and private water systems in Ohio, uh, Bangor, Maine, uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, he holds uh, Class 4 water treatment and distribution licenses in both New Hampshire and Maine and has held various licenses related to water systems in Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, Carl? Carl has uh, provided uh, some commentary to us, uh, meaning to, uh, to the fire chief a little bit earlier regarding the particular issue before you of height, and I, uh, I appreciate his coming tonight. Sure. Is this Good evening. Thanks. Uh, uh, I guess I'm just here to explain a little bit about how the water system works as a company. We only have an opinion on whether how tall the buildings are. Um, I just wanted to point out that there's certain hydraulic characteristics of the uh, the system that anybody's building a new building needs to be aware of um, in town. And basically, the Hampton Beach, everything south of Winnicott Road, is a separate pressure zone. The pressure is dictated by the, the Glade Path tank. Uh, it's about a half a million gallons uh, of water. Uh, when we talk about buildings, there's really not an issue with volume. Uh, we can put lots of water in the system, like the uh, the A Street fire four years ago, almost four years ago, we put two million gallons of water. <coughs> our the fire department used two million gallons of water in only about nine hours. So there's plenty of water there. Um, what happens though is when you get higher buildings, um, the pressure in the whole system is dictated by the height of the water in that glade path tank. <coughs> and at its normal operating level, you get about 70 psi at the base, and that's typically what most people see on a ground uh, ground floor building throughout the, the beach area. But obviously as you go higher, then that difference in head between the tank and wherever that point is where you want to use water, there's just less gravity there to, uh, to create water pressure, which is the energy that, that forces the water to flow out of a faucet or a shower or whatever the use is. And, uh, water pressure, basically it, it uh, determines the flow rate. So if you're patient, you can get as much water as you want at a higher elevation. But <laughs> At some point, you're not going to get enough flow to be satisfactory, like for a flower or a shower or um, maybe a, a sprinkler head. And uh, I did some rough calculations that are uh, our typical operating level. <coughs> Anything less than 60 feet is probably going to have satisfactory pressure for normal uses. Between 60 and 80 feet, it's going to be a little bit marginal. Um, 
you may end up taking a longer shower than you want to, things like that. And above 80 feet, it's, it's really not going to be enough to, to provide an, enough flow rate for, for normal uses. So it's really not a, a reason not to have tall buildings because there's engineering solutions uh, around that by way of booster pumps or elevated storage or, um, or other, other systems like that. So uh, I guess the point of me saying this is that if anybody's going to be considering new construction or new building, don't hesitate to come in and talk to, to us at the water company uh, early on so that you know what you have to deal with in order to provide uh, satisfactory water service. Uh, an anecdotally, Carl has related to me, just so we get a visualization of what the problem can be uh, with the uh, Ashworth Hotel, you had indicated to me that there were some complaint on upper stories at times. When the tank gets a little low, the upper stories can, can get some marginal water pressure. Um, in addition to the difference in elevation, you also have some frictional loss through plumbing, <coughs> meters, and other uh, pertinences. So. In certain buildings, even if the pipes aren't sized large enough, you may not get enough flow for what you want, even though there's plenty of water there if you're willing to wait for it. Yeah. But I do see that at the Ashworth occasionally. And I uh, also wanted to mention, Carl used the term elevated water storage. Uh, lately, because of my daughter's locating in Brooklyn, uh, <laughs> New York, I happen to go down there somewhat now. and. Uh, when you go down there, you see elevated storage tanks means a water tank on top of the building, which adds to a certain appearance, let's say, and also adds to the elevation of a non-structural element. If that's what they choose to If that's to what satisfy. they choose. Could, could I ask a question? As soon as I hear that they're done, are you all done, Carl? Yes, that's all I planned on saying. We really appreciate you coming in. Sure. and um, Mary Louise? You're talking in terms, Carl, of say showers, but what happens as far as fire protection goes? If I'm standing on the fifth floor or whatever it is, and I have to stand under the shower longer because the water's just dribbling through, um, what does that mean if the building catches on fire? Or maybe I should. Those sprinkler heads are designed to, to deliver. Three to five gallons per minute, or something in that a range. More, about 15. Um, so you need enough water pressure to, to provide that kind of flow rate. And, uh, so if you're, if it, uh, presumably a high high level floor might not have enough pressure to, right. to do that. Because I've been asking in case of a fire for the higher buildings, you know, if we had a ladder truck or something that might go high enough. But then the nice gentleman here said that if there's a fire. The firefighters, you know, over the third floor, the firefighters would fight the fire from inside the building. But if they get to the top of the building and it's going dribble, dribble. Well, you need a system, an engineered system, to provide the minimum flow rates that you need. Okay. And the builders know that. Well, that's going to be important for you to communicate to them. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to understand what the limitations of the water supply system in the area are. Now they are required to conduct an analysis of the water supply system to make sure that it will support fire protection systems as they design them. But we want to make sure that they're aware of those additional expenses <coughs> in advance. For example, when they constructed the Smutty Nose Brewery, it's, it's not in an area that has a sufficient or adequate water supply system. So there were additional features that were required after they had already submitted their proposal to the planning board. Mm. Um, they're required to have a uh, fire pump at their facility. And because there are two options, there could be a diesel powered pump or there could be an electrically powered pump, we require by code that they have to first demonstrate that there's a minimal number of interruptions in the electrical power supply before we would accept an electrically powered one. Otherwise, we'd require a diesel powered one. So naturally, there are other costs associated with resolving the low water pressure issue. For those buildings that are constructed at, at lower heights, it's not an issue because the, the system pressure is adequate. You know, there's plenty of volume, but you need to have the pressure to make the systems operate correctly. <coughs> to, to be clear, the building, the people that are building the buildings understand that that may be a requirement and they can make adjustments to their building structures and add the appropriate boosters, if that's the right word. Well, 
I, I can't speak for the people that would be coming forth with proposals. Okay. I couldn't say that they understand that fact. That information would have to be communicated. But to the them. technology is out there, and the equipment that is, is out correct. there for them to. The, to the buy alternate would be to have storage tanks, which are basically large volume water storage tanks constructed on the roofs of these buildings. That's the alternative, and you see that in many cities, where you see all these tall buildings and then on the tops of the structures are basically these large water but tanks. But if we did not want a, a, a something on top of the roof, there are other alternatives such as pumps. Booster pumps. That correct. are powered by diesel. Or, ga or, uh, electric. or gasoline. Electric. Yeah. If, the electric if the electricity was to go out, the mm -hmm. generator the generators would, generator. would, would kick in mm -hmm. and would power that water to be forced up. Correct. Okay, yep. so there are You can engineer solutions to this okay. problem. That is correct. Right. Yep. Very good. Anyone else from the board? Mark? Uh, I work at the plant and they have duplicate backup fire pumps over there for their tanks. And, and it is an electric driven and a diesel right. driven. So <laughs> that's the solution after the meter, right? There's to provide adequate pressure. Probably other uh, other mousetraps out there as well, like pressure storage tanks right. and such. But leave it up to the engineers to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, you know, under the constraints of the system. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Are you done? Yeah. I have another follow-up. In the instance where we're talking about a ten-foot difference here for the appurtenances over and above the height that's being suggested, but I have no idea if if it should be a situation where a tank needs to be installed on the roof are those only 10 feet high if they're higher than that then we have a problem with the appurtenance height that was why I asked a question mm -hmm. that if you don't have a tank are there other alternatives mm -hmm. that the engineers and the builders can put in mm -hmm. to make sure that the pressure is right. when you as high at the top. When you determine what an acceptable height is mm -hmm. for you and for the community, right. it's then incumbent upon them to develop a solution that makes their building work. Right. And then we review that and we determine <coughs> whether or not that solution is acceptable or not. Okay. But it would be up to us <coughs> to communicate during the course it of would, the individual's I planning. I think it would be appropriate to make sure that they're aware of that. Build. Okay. I guess my single question is, there are in fact other ways to get the pressure up to that level Correct. that we need yep. to do to fight Yeah, otherwise you couldn't build any exactly. high-rise building in any so, community. So Correct. there's alternatives and the, in the, in hopefully the builders and the engineers know about them. I, I, would, I would think that would be something that would be discussed at the review committee meetings. Correct. Right. You know? Okay. So when a plan comes forward and it comes before the board, whether it's at the PRC or mm -hmm. otherwise, that would be information. We just need to make sure that that gets passed along mm -hmm. so that they can begin planning for it early enough. Good. Very well. I, I would just want to ask the chief if I could. Chris, is there is there a, a building height over which your department would need to fight the fire from within the building rather than from without, given our current state of equipment? Um, well, we we always fight the fire from the inside of the building, unless the building is a total loss, in which case it's not worth placing any of our members at risk. If the fire has exceeded our ability to extinguish, we're just going to remain on the outside, protect the exposure buildings, and then extinguish the fire <coughs> or allow it to burn down to a level that can be extinguished. Um, but in all cases, our initial attack or initial attempt at extinguishing the fire is always from the interior, regardless of the size of the building, regardless of the number of stories. You know, the, the only question I have been asked is, does this impact the, the need for an aerial ladder or does the height of an aerial ladder um, dictate how tall the building is? Well, no, it doesn't really. I mean, it does affect rescue, but we can design buildings to be safe provided they have the right features, protective stairwells, sprinkler systems, appropriate early notification systems, etc., so that the occupants can egress from the building safely. The bigger concern is that think of the building in terms of its total size, total square feet of a building. <coughs> 
height isn't as much of a concern if the footprint of the building is 20 by 20 because the total square foot of the building isn't that large. And with the limited manpower that we have, we would have a reasonable chance at extinguishing a fire on an upper floor in a building like that. It's when buildings grow and increase in total square footage. For example, um, some of the more recently constructed buildings on, uh, on the beach, <coughs> there's a lot of square footage to those buildings. And when you only have two, three, mm -hmm. four, or five firefighters arriving initially, the larger the building, I if I said to you, do you feel there would be challenges fighting a fire at a manufacturing facility like we have in town? Probably everyone would agree because it's a large square foot building. We'll now take that building and just build <coughs> it up. So my, my greater concern is as we start to go up, developers want to maximize the footprint of the property they have as well, and we end up with these tall, large square foot area buildings. That's the bigger challenge to us. Mm. But they're all required to be sprinkled. That's correct. And they have the uh, ability to sprinkle them regardless of the water pressure that comes from the tower that... Uh, what? <coughs> and from Aquarian is, is speaking about. I'm sorry? They all have the ability to make adjustments and add apparatus to the building during the building period that will boost the water pressure regardless right. of the height of the water tower mm -hmm. that we've been... They can, en they can engineer in to the building design other protective features and other features for our use, yes. provided that they're maintained, we will use them. That's really the biggest problem that we found in a lot of the, uh, the buildings within the community. When they're new, those systems work as designed, but over time, because of lack of maintenance, we find that we can't necessarily rely on them, okay. and that becomes a problem. Thank you. Could I ask, uh, Attorney Gerald, do we have any way of mandating annual inspections in cases where the fire department feels that they need to um, review systems <coughs> to make sure that they're being maintained adequately? Um, is there something in the codes currently, Chris, that requires certain, that? Certain buildings there are. The problem we run into, and it happens even with the three-story buildings we have in the community, mm -hmm. that during certain times of the year, the property owners turn off their fire protection systems, oh, they turn wonderful. off their sprinkler systems, and they do not notify us. So we arrive to the building to find out that their fire protection systems are inoperable. Is there any way to prevent that? Is there any way we can, you know, mandate that people We can don't mandate turn them it, off, but, but how do we enforce it when we don't know they're doing it? Right. Let That's the problem. Let me say an answer to your question, Mary Louise. In the case of condominium developments, mm -hmm. The, the ones we've been facing recently, the larger ones, right. they have stormwater maintenance manuals that are actually incorporated into the condominium documents. Mm. Ah. Those typically have an annual reporting feature with a form to fill out that goes either to planning or public works. I would think that we you could require a, a maintenance manual for fire protection systems mm. for, for those kinds of developments mm -hmm. and require that the form connected with those be, fi be filed with the fire department on an annual basis. Do the, you see the, anything like that, Jamie? The code requires that those installed protective systems mm -hmm. be maintained, be inspected on an annual basis. Where, where the disconnect is in how that information is reported to us. Right. Often the information is not reported to us. And unless we respond to an emergency at a particular building or we actually go to conduct an inspection at the building, a lot of times we don't learn what the maintenance history is. Hmm. Any place that has a place of assembly, we do require and we follow up with any of those occupancies yeah. so that we have all of that documentation annually. But there are a number of places, condominiums for example, we don't inspect condominiums after they're constructed. So we have no Ooh. record of Eek. how their systems are being maintained. Ooh. I would I would absolutely support an ordinance that would require 
any property that has installed fire protection systems to report its status annually to uh, us. Absolutely. And I would I would encourage that for those that do not report that there has to be some penalty, otherwise it becomes meaningless. Mark, are the codes updated every year automatically? Uh, that's a hard question to, to answer. Okay. And, and I'll kind of explain. We have local ordinances. We have state fire code. We will follow whatever the current state fire code is. Sometimes the state fire code will reference a particular version of another code or standard. Most of the time, they're written so that it is adopted to follow whatever edition of the standard is in effect at the time. And that's what that's what we hope to see. And we've adopted that automatically, right? We have we're required by law to follow state fire code, and state fire code then references a number of other codes. Mm -hmm. It becomes complicated and it's it's confusing oftentimes to a lot of developers when when they don't understand the fire codes. Most developers have a good understanding of building codes, but not necessarily fire code. Hmm. So they'll come in and they will want to know, well, why can't we do this? And we'll show them the codes. And there's a pattern of how we arrive at that particular code. We look to ordinance, we look to state fire code, state fire code then references, for example, NFPA 1, life safety code, or 101. And then that code then in turn references another state. So there's, yeah, a chain. you know, and, yeah. and that's one of the reasons why, you know, most of our reviews on these projects, we require a fire protection engineer review of them as well, because the codes are so complex. And the larger the buildings, the larger the projects, the more complex they become. Okay, thank you. Okay. Wow. <coughs> well, I appreciate you coming forward with this, Mark, <coughs> and bringing some good knowledge. Thank you. I, I actually have uh, a few other comments, and I uh, you, I don't Chief. need, however, you, these gentlemen to stay, but thank I thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Um, within the time I had, having received this document, um, the, the proposed change, I've actually um, considered it myself and, and talked to attorney Peter Laughlin about some of the provisions and uh, the initial one the question we had in mind was what is the uh, advisability of using the word subdistrict whenever you're considering a subdistrict and, and actually that's not a term that's commonly used either in what Peter Laughlin who's encountered who's the author of the so-called green book as you know on zoning in the state and, and I don't encounter it very often either in the years of practice I had before I came here. Um, whenever you're considering a sub-district, you often look at whether or not what you're doing constitutes spot zoning, uh, because that would be a problem. Um, I've shown this map uh, for Article 3, Proposed Zoning Amendment 2, to Attorney Laughlin. He and I have considered it together. And uh, it looks like there's enough of an area involved so that with enough property so it wouldn't be considered spot zoning. Um, I did want to say to you that there is a, uh, this board has already approved a, uh, a plan for the new uh, fire substation uh, that encompasses uh, this, this lot right here. Mm -hmm. So the new substation that's going to be the land for which it's going to be deeded to the town by the Hampton Beach Village District will take into account both of these lots here so that the line when you when you run it will actually run through here rather than including this back portion. I think that's what was intended. The, the current tax maps haven't been amended yet, but this board has approved the uh, lot line adjustment plan and subdivision plan to do that. Um, the, the planner asked me whether or not that we needed a, a description by um, the way we have it here, uh, which is a little lengthy, but not nearly so lengthy as what we have in the ordinance when the RA district was added uh, to the opening lots along Ashworth Avenue. Uh, in that event, you had uh, 
these pages and more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pages 12 and 13. And the answer uh, Peter gave to that is no, you don't need that detailed description. Uh, rather, you would, would need reference to a map that can be readily ascertained what the, where the district is located. And uh, I think this is a very helpful map that uh, the tax assessor, as I understand it, generated. Uh, so I think you can make the description a little bit briefer than that and not go into the kind of detail that we suffered with before. Um, in looking at the word subdistrict, which appears in several different places, uh, it seems to me that the uh, subdistrict is, uh, it, has its, it has its own column on the chart in Article 4. And so it seems to me that all the requirements you would want for a standalone district are are on that chart. And so it, it, for this particular context, I think subdistrict probably is not needed. Uh, you would want obviously some initials that would uh, would encompass that particular district. Uh, you've got BSS right there at the moment, but I think that's because of the word subdistrict. Uh, another thought I've heard is that you might want to call this BS1, contemplating that in future you may want to have a BS2 or a 3, uh, depending on how development progresses and your thinking progresses. Um, I did want to say to you that uh, Attorney Laughlin, in talking with me about this, I alerted him to the fact that there have been variances granted for development as to height. Uh, by the Board of Adjustment, uh, north of this on Ocean Boulevard, 339 to 345 mm -hmm. Ocean Boulevard, and uh, currently under construction, and also to the south, uh, J and K Street, uh, the uh, sea spray. Mm -hmm. And so, Attorney Laughlin's suggestion for, to me to pass along to you was that in, in confining the height uh, Amendment and, and increase to this particular area of the beach. You may you will want to articulate as you develop this uh, thinking why it was that you didn't include the area to the north and the area to the south to make a good record. I understand there are there are reasons for that, but it would be good to articulate them in the record. Uh, just a couple of other quick thoughts on this because I know there are other people that would like to speak. Um, in the footnote um, on the third page, uh, 27, it uh, talks about building height shall be measured in accordance with Article 1, Section 1.6. Under A, it says, uh, with the exception that unoccupied architectural appurtenances to which there is no permanent access um, shall be excluded. Now, I think probably what was meant was not permanent access, but rather public access. So, uh, because you're going to have access that is permanent to reach these features, but I, I, it's just not public access. I think that's what was intended. Um, in footnote 30, um, talks about structures prohibited from casting shadows. Um, in, in the start of the second sentence, I would recommend that you put in the words, the shadow effects of unoccupied architectural appurtenances. Um, so those words be put there. In the last line of footnote 30, uh, you're talking about what shall be included. And I don't think actually there is a calculation being made as much as a determination of the shadow effects. So I would recommend that the last line be amended so that it reads, included in the determination of the shadow effects, and plural, of, of the structure. So that's uh, really what I had for you on this one. Included in the? In the determination of the shadow effects of the structure. <coughs> Can you also repeat um, the, the rewording of the sentence that starts with structures would be prohibited from? Yes, I, that first sentence I've left alone, as is. 
but starting the second sentence, I would add the words at the beginning, the shadow effects of, so that it would read the shadow effects of unoccupied architectural appurtenances, i.e. turrets, cupolas, bell towers, etc., and structural screening, i.e. facades, parapets, low wall extensions and railings used to screen mechanical equipment, rooftop units, elevator overrides, exhaust hoods, etc., shall be included in the determination of the shadow effects <coughs> of the structure. Hmm. Better. Mind emailing that to us as well? No problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your thorough overview of our language. <coughs> Jamie, did I notice you say that there was a reason why we use permanent and not public? Uh, no. Okay. So, so be it. I, th I think we would just discuss the non-residential use in that above 70. Right. Yeah, well, that was our intent. Any, anything yeah. on, the, on the roof. You'll have to have access to get onto the roof if you have to repair yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you again. I, I wanted to bring up, I guess it would be a good time. Um, before you, you have a highlighted version. Mm -hmm. These are changes that were uh, suggested by the billing inspector. To this one? Well, I also had to review it. To this one? Yes. You mean the yellow? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yellow highlight. Yeah. Oh, well, we just so what are we changing it to, Jamie? Well, he, I guess if we're going to, if we don't need all the wording and the, the uh, description, yeah. this changes on that may not be applicable. Uh, you're just clarifying that the Keep beginning should be the, the northeasterly corner of Ashworth Ave and not the southeastern. Of the, of the intersection. Uh -huh. um, and then in, in Article 3, the changes to the use regulations, where we have, and, th and this language, this uh, regulation's in there now. And so we, we did that a, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you know, in the first 25 feet of mm -hmm. the ground floor to non residential principal permitted uses in the business district. He suggested we change that to professional commercial retail. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the intent of the board. I agree yeah. with him on that. We don't want to necessarily open it up to any use in the, the business season. All that mm -hmm. is allowed. Is there are uses like quarrying or uh, you know, storage, yeah. warehousing? You know, we, I think we want to. Be very expensive real estate for limited <laughs> real estate <laughs> uses. I, I thought that was a good suggestion. Um, and then in the in Article Four, the dimensional requirements table, um, and this is just uh, editorial. We we need to change the footnote. Thirty becomes thirty-two <coughs> because of the uh, impervious surface worn article changes. Yeah, that footnotes that are the same, so it would depend on which goes first on the ballot. <laughs> oh, I see where you are over here. Right. You already have a twenty-nine. Yeah. You, you mentioned thirty in your comments. Then that's the version yeah. I was working oh, on. Yeah, I, I understand now. <laughs> We're going to change all of that to BS one. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, that myself, Mary Louise. Uh, uh, is that Colin? If I'm hearing Mark correctly, um, we don't want to have a subdistrict. No, I would just omit the word subdistrict. Terrible. Not good. <clears throat> to take out subdistrict. The question yeah. is whether we call it BS1. Right. Right. I don't have a problem with calling it BS1. Yeah, business seasonal, the first one run. Yeah. yeah. So that would change anywhere up here. Universal mm -hmm. change. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was in our discussion when we propose this area that we were going to try to do some of the larger lots and areas down there and then because it was my feeling anyway that if we tried to do the whole beach that yeah. it, it would be too much right now yeah 
I think I think uh, at one of the uh, board of adjustment hearings on increased height for something that was proposed before the board of adjustment on the A block, there was a, a discussion. Uh, Mr. Nighthan, I think, was involved in that. Why that particular this particular area is suited to the height mm -hmm. where the others would not be, and, and he can address that. Very good. Now, how much of this is going to be printed as the question on the warrant, vis-a-vis -vis the backup information? Do we have a focus on the the actual wording of what will what the question will be to the public? Actually, uh, Mary Louise, it's a good point. The way the RSAs are worded, what appears on the ballot <coughs> simply asks, is the public in favor of, uh, of amendment something blank uh, proposed by the planning board? So this top. And so then uh, there's a, sl a small topical description of what's involved, okay. but then the public is referred to a separate listing uh, posted at the balloting session of the wording of the change. Okay. And so the wording of the change needs to be verbatim what will be going into the uh, into the ordinance. Yes, thank my, you. My concern with that is that some people don't have the time <coughs> or whatever to read proposals like this in detail and if they're in the booth ready to vote I, w I just want to be sure that there's enough specificity on the article that's in front of them that they're making their mark yes or no so they understand what they're actually voting well, this for. this one basically say building higher to 70 feet to 80 feet and back up. Because this is, I think this the, is whole, the whole purpose of that was, was, was that it was too long and too right. lengthy that the people voted no just because right. they didn't want to read it. All the meets and bounds descriptions. Exactly. I mean, right. When you, when you get into the actual Okay. Westerly from lot X Y Z to Easterly from lot mm -hmm. that should be in another spot right. from where you are voting from. But the specifics of this, the height, the height of the appurtenances and stuff. I just like That's to see the final wording before we close this off in January, to to make sure there are enough specifics in there so that when I go into the voting booth, I'm not having to run out in the hall and read oh, whatever's right. posted up there. I, I would include in that the shadowing on the beach as well. Mm -hmm. The height and the shadowing <coughs> yeah. on the beach. Which I did put the wording that I had come up with. Because this is a hair but long. Not, I'm not criticizing it. I'm just funny. saying that that's that first segment. Yeah, I... And I, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that that <coughs> takes a little thinking to go through, but we want to... Did want to make it too long? I wanted to... Right. The, that's too long. Uh, pertinent information. That's cool. Right. Yeah. 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 Y
um, and um, I believe that the consensus of the Beach Commission uh, with the uh, endorsement from Mr. McMahon, uh, we feel very comfortable at this point in, in supporting uh, the 70, 80, and, and, the, and the 25 feet. Um, I might add that with that being understood, that somewhere down the road, uh, and I'm not saying next year, or two years from now, but somewhere down the road, that if, uh, if it's necessary, that this board look at uh, an additional amendment that would then carry further up on uh, Ashworth Ave, up to possibly um, around the corners to um, the uh, the restaurant up there. Um, but for all intent purposes for this evening's discussion, I would just like to say that the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission is uh, uh, in in agreement with the planning board uh, with your recommendations. Can I ask John a question? Thank you very much. You sure can. Mr. Chairman? Yes, you sure can. Yes, John, quick. John, the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Um, Ann Carnaby is sitting as our representative on the Route 1, uh, 1A, 1B bypass study. And uh, I had the privilege of sitting in on the first meeting that they held. And the goal, as I understood it at that meeting, and Ann can correct me if I'm wrong, is to try to make Route 1A and 1B, which is up in Portsmouth, a focal point for tourism and, and getting uh, people to use the coast road. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about keeping the New England flavor, if you will, or ambiance of the area. I've noticed that the projects coming in, uh, I, well, I saw one of them looked like a helicopter had picked it up and brought it up from Miami Beach. Is there any effort on the part of the commission to try to encourage, um, I know you're not designing the plans, but to try to encourage a little more of a New England flavor in some of the construction um, on the 1A area? Well, I, I think, uh, Madam Selectman, the um, we have looked at um, the Beach Commission's role within the Hampton Beach Master Plan, mm -hmm. which doesn't involve going all the way up to Portsmouth, although we like to make our own comments as 1A. Uh, and, and as, as 1A, because I think everything fits together. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that we have focused on um, as a big part of the, the master plan is the economic development component mm -hmm. of the Hampton Beach business district. Right. So saying that, our focus has been both from a commercial and residential perspective on whether or not we can look at the architecture of mm -hmm. buildings which fits into what I would consider the Route 1 corridor look to where we're not actually looking at a uh, another part of town or an industrial park type of uh, architecture, mm -hmm. but more or less what fits in as people would drive up Route 1. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for the most part, um, a lot of the projects that have uh, been designed and, and proposed and, and built um, you would be able to say, I would be able to say that it, it does fit with the the way Route 1 as you as you're driving up from from Seabrook up to Portsmouth. Now keeping in mind there's a lot of areas between Seabrook and Portsmouth that is more or less considered residential or very small commercial and if you were to take a look at, because my wife and I go up Route 1 uh, A all the time, mm -hmm. uh, you would see a lot of the scenic byway concept right. all along. Um, but to, to answer your question, I, I think <coughs> the downtown or the, the, the business district uh, between um, the bridge um, and uh, the Ashworth Ave, Ashworth Hotel, uh, is one that we have looked at as a business economic development piece of that Route 1A. Right, because but I'm not talking about Route mm -hmm. 1. I'm talking about making a friendlier, well I'm just trying to yeah. understand if there's a, a concept here to try to make 1A, which is a very popular mm -hmm. route, particularly for tourists, particularly in the summer. I'm just trying to get a little bit more of the New England ambiance in the area. Uh, 
in that particular area, in the area that we're talking about here. There's a voluntary uh, plan submission to the Beach Commission right. to review plans and right. they make recommendations about mm -hmm. architectural details. Right. Well, that's what I'm, yeah. I'm thinking. If, if that is a focus. Yes, and, and, and that was established, and as a matter of fact, that was established back in 2007 by, right. by Tommy McGurk. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the uh, proposals that come in today to the building inspector, I know for a fact that Kevin would say, have you all talked to mm -hmm. the Beach Commission yet? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. But what I'm seeing coming out by way of plans is not what I would call the ambiance of New England on 1A. So I, I'm just kind of throwing that out and hoping we can get a little, you know, input from the commission. Yeah. Um, if I could ask also, uh, John, when, when the A development was being considered uh, for this particular A block, a comment was made by the commission that this particular area of Hampton Beach is more situated than other areas in Hampton Beach to a taller height. Allowance. Can you can you amplify why this particular area is, is was considered in that way? I think a lot of it, and in, in, uh, Representative Rice might be able to add to to my comment. But when we looked at the A block, we looked at the front and, and the and the back and that whole property, if you will. And we were saying that at that point, if we wanted to have, and if it was acceptable to have a hundred foot building somewhere along Ash, uh, along Ocean Boulevard, mm -hmm. that would probably be the only place that I know the Beach Commission would support that size of a building. Because really, when you look at it, there's nothing really in the back of it. Uh, whereas, let's say if you uh, took um, the Harris uh, Motel, that building there, and if you wanted to say, let's go to a 100-foot hotel there, you would you would have I, I think you would have a problem not only the residents there but also uh, the Beach Commission because it just doesn't fit that block did fit in our opinion and, and I believe that uh, Representative Rice has uh, some additional inf information on that. the previous trip. Yeah. Yeah. thank you John With that, it kind of segues right in. Uh, for the record, Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Um, the, the background on this is when the visioning statement was done by Face Spofford and Thorndike uh, back in 2002, 3, 4, in, the, in that uh, area when the Beach Commission was first established, uh, out of that grew the predecessor of this right here. And Fran was on the, the Beach Commission at the time, and he brought that same uh, concept here to this. It was ahead of its time then, but the idea was to protect the residential areas as residential, to protect the business areas along Ocean Boulevard and, and uh, Ashworth Avenue so that they were still business friendly. And in the center of what we've all, we all refer to as the banana, that was gonna stay residential. Uh, the On the street, if you had a street front uh, address, then you could go into a business residential. And that study recommended two places for high rise or higher density, I'll put it that way. One was down in the vicinity, the broad vicinity, and it grew just a big circle, it wasn't precise. It was just in this area down by the state park, uh, down by the entrance to the state park, uh, on the south end of the beach, and at the north end, up here in the general vicinity of the A block and the Ashworth. That those are the two areas that should be anchors on either end of the beach. The thing that, that and, and that they adopted, they introduced a concept, the floor area ratio, to, to be a way to judge this and make it relative so it wouldn't get out of hand. Um, the thing that shot it down was not that it was too much too soon, it was the people in the middle that we were trying to protect their residential areas, they said, no, we want to have an opportunity to be, build high rises here too. <laughs> they can do it up by the Ashworth, we want it down by the Harris Sea Ranch. And they were the ones who killed it. Well, when it came before the planning board at that time, uh, one of the members uh, was uh, Tom Gillick, who said, uh, concept's okay, but it's a little ahead of its time right now. And he kind of said, you, this, needs to, this needs to 
simmer for a while, so to speak. And Tom was never one to rush into anything. And so he said that this, this needs to just sit and, and sit on people's minds for a while. And so as a result, what we have now, this is the very, very same concept, that this is a higher density, not the whole beach all at once. Let's try this one, see how it works. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the background on it. It came out of a planning document that was commissioned by the town that was accepted, and part of that planning document became the infrastructure project also. So we are in the process of implementing these things. One of the other things was we need to rebuild the seashell complex. Well, that came out of it, and the state grabbed a hold of that, and they did it. And those two things have have uh, prompted other people, businesses in the area, the sea catch being one of note, has put much, much more in there. Uh, other places along the beachfront have put much more in there. Uh, we now have a new owner to the casino. I think we're going to see improvements. Uh, a lot of them are going to be very subtle. A lot of them won't be. Um, one, one of the, th the things uh, we talk about height as a, as a limitation, uh, and you talk about things up in, in back of it, uh, what John said was absolutely right. Uh, that, uh, that what's right directly behind can have an impact on what's going to be built. Uh, what right now is called the, the, uh, uh, is it the, the C, which one is it? I can't get the names right. Uh, Mr. Green's uh, current development down where, uh, where the, uh, next to uh, uh, where the old salt was. Sea spray. Sea spray, that's it. I can't keep them all, all straight here. Um, the sea spray, as you recall, that was originally uh, going to be the Breckenridge. And before that, it was the Majestic. The Majestic, majestic. The majestic was the ugliest design in the world. Now, just yeah. to address your concern about um, architectural design, uh, Skip Windermiller was the first chair of the Architectural Design Subcommittee. And when the Majestic came to us and they said, what do you think about this stuff? Uh, it had ramps going up to comply with ADA. We said, no, oh, that ain't going to work. It was the ugliest thing in the world. It looked like a game of uh, ladders or whatever it is. Uh, so that thing sat. And in the meantime, along comes a nearby resident, Mr. Scanlon, if you will recall, who sued one after another after another. They were small lawsuits. And it didn't cost him much. And it was just enough to prevent Jack Kopka from being able to develop that property. Well, he came up with a better design, the Breckenridge, which had a couple of towers in the front with an elevator in there, retail, luxury apartments, a nice big uh, second deck uh, on it. It was, it was a beautiful building. People couldn't get it put in because the lawsuits kept holding it up because he was complaining about the shadow. It was going to destroy his view. Well, before the fire that resulted in all this, there was no view. But he said, now that the fire's there, now I, now I have a view. If you build this building, you're going to destroy my view. So it was like, it's kind of like that deal about the kid who killed his parents and then threw himself on the mercy of the court because he was an orphan. And that was kind of what this was like. So you, you always run into these odd situations in here. A um, couple of my just comments on the, the rest of this. Uh, I'm um, four square in favor of it because it's kind of like deja vu all over again with regard to the, the stuff at the beach in particular. Um, I particularly like... The, the fact that you have separated out the living space from the cosmetics on the top of the building. I think that is probably one of the wisest things that's been done in zoning at the beach in a long time. Uh, we tried to, uh, for a long time, to try and propose things, and this is about at the same time as the floor area ratios, to uh, incorporate it in there and saying that roofs don't count, because we were trying to promote slanted roofs rather than flat roofs. Um, the one on K Street, the, the big apartment uh, building on K Street, uh, condo I guess it is, uh, that thing made a lot of significant changes uh, when they came before the, the Beach Commission Design uh, Review Committee. Um, the Breckenridge was another one. Uh, one that did not was the one that had been proposed by Jean Boudreau. It always looked like a glass and plastic. It looked like a four-story Howard Johnson's, and it really wasn't, it didn't fit in with the yeah. uh, area of the beach. Um, I came up with a, a flow chart for projects that came in before this board and a way for anything that was at the beach to go before the beach commission first for design considerations, not mandatory, just here are some suggestions mm -hmm. that we would put before you. From there it would go to the ZBA to get any variances once those design uh, modifications were put in, and then after they had done it, then it would come to the, this board. 
so that they could then approve it as it sat with the variances and with the design considerations already rolled in. Um, I will make, uh, I don't have it here, but I will dig it out and I will bring it to, uh, we'll make a copy of it available to Jamie and he can uh, pass it out to the, to the board. It's, a, it's just a, a flow chart, a perk chart that shows how these things will fit in. Um, just a couple of features on here. You talk about concern about water in the upper upper levels. Remember, we got a water slide down there that does a pretty good job of pumping water up a very high volume of water up to a fairly decent height up there. That's the principle that we've got to remember when we're talking about uh, the water for high-rise buildings. Do they have a pump? Well, they, it doesn't flow up there by itself? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, it's pumped up there. So it's and assisted. It's consistent and it's and it's high. It's a fairly good pressure because it's a takes a pretty good amount of uh, volume of water if uh, right. you're going to slide down that thing. So that same thing is the principle that the, that the design would be on. Anybody that builds, I think they would know that they would have to do do that. The fire code. You asked a question whether the fire code is uh, updated <coughs> updated every year. From from what I've heard from the state fire marshal in committee hearings up in Concord. The code is updated every year. Mm -hmm. It is not necessarily always adopted every year by every community right. from there on down. Mm -hmm. And there are those who think that some of the annual uh, changes to the fire code are merely commercial uh, ads to put a new piece of equipment in that somebody wants to sell to the, to the state or have it see it in. They go sell it to the fire marshal and he puts it in and so forth. Um, Another thing would be the permits, the building permits that you issued uh, could be conditioned upon some of these things, the concerns that you had about well, have to. adequacy of fire protection and it's got to pass this. You could make that, certainly make that a part of your building's permit. Uh, that would be an easy way to do it. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, uh, Hampton's not the first building, uh, first town in the, or city or whatever in the state to have a building that was 70 feet tall. Uh, you can go to other places, Portsmouth, Concord, uh, Rochester, Nashua, Manchester, and you can see uh, many of those uh, things up there. If you ever notice the last time you were in a city, just think about it, you go by a fairly good sized building, and out in the front, on the front of the building, it looks like a fire hydrant cap. And that's for, those are for various combinations of water going in from a hydrant down the street, or up, but there's a pump inside there someplace. Yeah. That's pumping it one direction or the other, either in or out so that they can fight the fire as they need to. So all of those provisions, I don't think those are the things of major concern, and I think that they would be um, uh, ad adequately handled. Um, finally, the, the issue of shadows. Um, I studied the issue of shadows a long time ago when we tried to do the floor area ratios. I think when um, Michael Green uh, was in uh, to get the variance before the, the uh, uh, ZBA on uh, A, he did it. I did it mathematically through stuff that was available on the internet at that time. Uh, Michael had a computer program that did it all for him. He pushed a button and bingo, they could find out exactly where the shadow would be. Mm -hmm. And up at that end, it's very, very wide. There's no problem up at the A and B Street end of it there because Ocean Boulevard is so wide and for a good bit of it uh, this way as well. One of the, My concern is that if you say that it's um, from, six, from to, uh, prior to 6 p.m., um, I think before you put that in concrete here, I think you ought to talk to somebody, have them come in and talk to you, somebody like Jim D uh, Donahue, Jimmy Donahue, the lifeguard, somebody who's down at the beach all the time, who sees this every day, and ask an intelligent question. Does the sun, are there people on the beach at the time when the shadows hit there? I would submit to you, no. They don't sit up there next to the wall and huddle up there and say, oh my God, the shadow is hitting us. We're going to turn, we're like vampires getting into the sun. No, it's not, it doesn't work that way. The people that are going to be there for a long time are probably a little farther out where they know that there will be plenty of sun anyway. They may not have ever been here before and they don't know, but they're going to be out there in the middle of these. They're not going to be huddled up against the seawall where the first, you know, oh my God, it's ten minutes to six and the, the shadow is already hit here. I don't think you're going to have any apocalyptic things like that happen. A lot of this is, a, is an awful lot of common sense. Um, finally, on, on number, uh, oh, oh and also, with all due respect to the, our town council, when you start mentioning every little piece of equipment that's up on the top and it shall not cast a shadow, uh, 
made the joking comment that some of the folks in the back did. Here we go. Here's a lawyer turning one page into ten again. <laughs> they get paid by the word. Um, the word building is fine. The structure and its appurtenances shall not. Okay, because once you start getting into them, if you miss anything, then you then that one gets through free. If you named ten things and there were twelve and you missed two of them, those two are home free because you didn't specifically mention them. So if you just say the building and its appurtenances, keep it as simple as possible rather than complex, then you, I think you, you, it, it covers it adequately and the people understand it. Um, Sorry, Fred, I didn't draft this. <laughs> I'm not paid by the word. <laughs> no. um, as for the uh, your concern, uh, Ms. Wilzia, on the um, wording that would go in here, right. I would presume that it could be something similar to what Tracy and I see up all the time, all the time on the bills in, uh, in Concord. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, "Shall we vote to approve uh, the recommendation by the Planning Commission uh, regarding the increased height of buildings?" Period. If they haven't read it before voting day, they almost don't deserve to vote on it because it's too complex an issue. You can't walk into the voting booth and expect you're going to learn it all while you're standing inside the confines of the voting group. This is the type of issue that is incumbent upon the Board of Selectmen, the town clerk, and the boards that are promoting them to get it out there. It's going to be in the paper. It's going to be explained many, many times in many ways. And I think that that short title pertaining to the increased height of buildings at Hampton Beach is sufficient. Otherwise, people are going to get, their eyes are going to glaze over by the third line. Yes. I think it is incumbent upon any board of selectmen when drafting a warrant to not assume what the public may or may not have studied up on. I think it is our obligation to at least be sure that there is enough information, not rambling on for paragraphs, but enough specificity in there regarding exact height being proposed and exact height of appurtenances so that people well you have an obligation to the voters Fred because many of us are very involved That's why we went to SB2 so that you could finalize the wording of a bill and there's a month plus but for people to review that wording before they go in our problem is that we have people we have ten times as many people vote and they don't bother to read what it is they're voting on. But that's, so that's their obligation. That's too. not, no, this is that, but it's our obligation to be as specific as humanly possible to the voters who went to that voting booth. And if we that need is posted to there, that them. is what the RSA says. That's what the RSA says. I have another quick question after Brendan is done. Am, am I not correct to say that the entire article is posted at the polling? Waters. Yes. Right. Yes. And prior yes. Right. And prior I understand two. that so, too. Yep. And in order to expedite the voting process when yes. you walk into a booth yes. and you've got 15 articles to look at, mm -hmm. if you are truly interested, mm -hmm. you can look up each and every one of them prior to walking into the booth, voting, and then exiting. You and I understand that, Brendan, but nevertheless, you have voters out there of all shapes and sizes and experience, and I think in, as a courtesy to them, because this is a binding vote, you need to be as specific in as short a period of time as you can. I agree with that, but you said all shapes, sizes, and experiences. Mm -hmm. If you're an experienced voter, you will be looking at those warrant articles ahead of time. I, you don't assume anything when individuals come to vote. I want to ask Fred one more quick I, question. I just, I just suggest refer to the RSA. It is very specific in what it calls for and what should be in there. The idea was to make it as brief as possible on the ballot so that people's eyes wouldn't glaze over. Yes. Thank you, Fred. But even if their eyes do glaze over, they have a right to understand what they're voting for. I want to ask you a quick question with your experience in Concord and some other communities. You referenced height and in the other communities. What has been your experience, or if you can tell us, with uh, X height, say in Manchester or uh, Bow or something, uh, they have a stipulated height, say 70 feet. Uh, is there a disproportionate granting of variances 
for higher buildings, or does I, the, you, you can't? I have no way of knowing that. I will re refer you to, though, to a statement that was made by a member of the ZBA that he said he would be more comfortable in considering a variance for a, on height of building if the height was already up there in an area that was close so we didn't have to make a big change. Okay, that's reasonable. So, th I mean, I think that's what this is, I think that's what you people are trying to do here mm -hmm. is to put it up in an area so that, mm -hmm. okay, this is okay, but if you want to go above this, you're going to have a mm -hmm. harder okay. stair to climb even though it might be a little bit. Good. And, and um, oh. I like what you've done with the stuff in the center of town because uh, that avoids having to think about historic districts and things of that nature which are extremely restricted. This allows you to address those issues without uh, uh, going into that detail. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, Chairman, can I just say... Sure. Uh, Mr. 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 Rice did mention uh, the uh, lengthy proceedings involving several appeals of several different ZBA decisions as to the J and K Street property. Uh, in the course of that, uh, the ZBA was presented actually with shadow studies for the various versions of that building. So when this board is, re is, is requiring a determination to be made, mm -hmm. it is feasible engineering-wise to do that. Sure. And uh, so, and of course, you are able to, in requiring applicants to demonstrate the shadow effect, uh, engage expertise at their expense. Sure. Mm -hmm of all of this. And I, and I did want to say too that uh, when I talked to Peter Laughlin today, he said uh, that the city council in Portsmouth that does their zoning is actually decreasing the height of buildings from 60 feet to 45. Mm -hmm. The Seacoast Sunday has been carrying a lot of the Portsmouth proceedings up there as far as zoning. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this? Seeing none? Arthur. Come on up, Arthur. I'm trying. You're an optimist, Mr. Chairman. It ain't easy. I have to be careful. That's Our equipment's on the ground there. I have to be careful. It's just the ear. It's on the ground. It's just the ear. Your earphones are on the ground, Arthur. Ah. Good. Tax I like, money. I like low heights. <laughs> Our Moody, 3 Thompson Road, which is, <coughs> which is uptown. <clears throat> I would just like to remind the board of what zoning is. Grant of power for zoning. <clears throat> State statutes allow for height, number of stories, size of buildings, and other structures. Lot sizes, percentage that lot that may be occupied, the size of yards, meaning side yards, also courts and open open spaces, the density of population in the municipality, and the loco location and use of buildings, structures, <coughs> and land use for business, industrial, residential, and other purposes. And the purposes of the zoning. <clears throat> to lessen the congestion in the streets is number one. To secure safety from fires, panic, and other dangers, including nuclear accidents, I imagine. To promote health and general welfare. To provide adequate light and air to prevent the overcrowding of land, to avoid undue concentration of population, and to facilitate <clears throat> the adequate provision of transportation, solid waste, water, sewage, sewerage, <coughs> schools, parks, and daycare. And <coughs> uh, to three or four other things concerning agriculture, which I don't think they're gonna use each land for agriculture. <clears throat> this uh, height frenzy started back with the fire at the Old Saw early summer in 99. Some of the building owners, there were only two lots affected by the fire. 
the people involved created ad hoc committee to have quote unquote town meetings at the uh, precinct hall and to push the planning board to immediately consider for the next town meeting in 2000 increasing the height that seemed to be their only thing mm -hmm. however they didn't want they didn't want heights <coughs> they wanted setbacks on second stories and up that place, they didn't want a wall like we have for the J to K Street block on Ocean Boulevard. And when the planning board wanted to act slowly, they started the push for the Hampton Beach Area Commission statute to give them some kind of <coughs> lobby effort. Now, back up until the early 1980s, the Business Seasonal District, which is also in North Beach around High Street, <coughs> did not have to have the 50-foot setbacks. <coughs> they were exempt, the only district <coughs> in town exempt. And in order to finally get it passed, so the whole town would be, have adequate side yards, buffer zones, <clears throat> they increased the size of what's considered a dwelling unit in the business seasonal district so that you could have large hotel rooms or suites. I don't know what happened to that after that was passed, but that's not in your consideration here. You take that back. <laughs> uh, so we have Contels now that only have one parking space per <coughs> unit and aren't considered dwelling units. Uh, I heard uh, some discussion today, uh, like Rye Beach. They want to be more like the Yankee destinations in New England. Well, when they were guaranteed Hampton Seward, they immediately changed their zoning so that they, quote, and you can read the Portsmouth Herald if you want to this, would not become another Hampton Beach, unquote. With this proposal, up, up, and away, you are even more intensifying all the things that zoning is supposed to curtail. And I mentioned the nuclear evacuation plan that the Hampton Police Association for decades has says won't work. Well, you're going to have more people now. You're going to have a, few, a couple more stories of people in the most congested area of the beach. Traffic is the number one thing it's going to increase now when that passed back in the early <coughs> 80s the new owners of the casino from 1976 were in favor of it because they could see the condos marching down from Boar's Head and the day trippers uh, the hotels and the guest houses were being turned into condos, residential condos, and they could see that what they had was for the day trippers, mostly, uh, and they also have a parking lot, <laughs> which is day trippers, and the whole state beach is for day trippers, and especially the meters, <clears throat> which pay for the seawall maintenance. And they, that's their mission, is to cater to the public that if you live there, you probably aren't going to use their facilities as much. 
So that's, in a way, I'm surprised uh, <coughs> that the uh, NPD Carrier Commission is uh, whole heartedly, in fact, probably promoted this. And of course, the people who testified at your other hearing, or whatever it was called, they want their property to increase in value, which this will increase their property in value, I imagine, or at least what they can get for it. I don't know if that will affect valuation immediately if this passes or not. I, I don't know the assessment process. But uh, there was also mention of those cities that cities that have over 50 foot height buildings. I know Manchester has them, Portsmouth, but it's Nashville. They're cities. Yeah. The one thing I see you haven't done is what well, you're you're having a new definition of building height in here just for this subzone or BS1 or BS2 or whatever it's called. The current definition of building height only excludes and tenny and residential the tenny and chimneys. So even the rest of the BS zone won't have this new definition unless you change the building height definition to allow them also, as well as other districts in town. Most districts in town are 35 foot height, three stories. You all, there was also mention of building codes, and, and I'd like to just mention something. Uh, your building codes, Article 11, uh, states that when there is a conflict between the state, the state building code and the state fire code, it states that the state fire code shall take precedence. Well, this is this is <coughs> false. The state statute clearly states that the more, uh, let me read it. What's the point, Arthur? I'm, 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 I don't well, know where you're going. Really. Well, we, had, you're we had a lot of discussion talking. about the fire codes, and I'm just mentioning that your fire code is wrong because the state statute says it, state fire code does <clears> not take precedence over the state uh, building code what when there is a conflict. What is this board going to do about that? You can put it, you can have another hearing. You, you put it put in a correction. How long has it been wrong? Uh, since 2009. Uh, it's the one that provides the most safety that pertains, not state fire code. One last thing on the shadows. There is a, there has been a published study on the shadows from A Street South or from that ash core. So, and, uh, and the I, planning department has a copy. It goes back you know, a couple of decades, but it does have some geometry in there, some figures that show what time of year shade goes on the beach. Having September 1st in here, which is before Labor Day, uh, when the sun is lower, and the shadow in the afternoon is longer toward the beach and 6 p.m. when the uh, I think sunsets probably about 8 you know uh, that might take some uh, changing that, that, so but that's something we can refer to in the future correct because it's, it's on file pardon that's something that's on file with the yeah. planning so we can refer to that in the future yeah. I think it was mimeograph, so it might be quite old. But if there was somebody down here asking questions. There was a group down here asking questions of tourists in and, and, and one chapter, at least, was about the sun and the, sure. the sun. So, 821, and I shall sit down for the next article. Thank you, Arthur. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this application, on this amendment? Back to the board. 
the spirit is staying focused. <coughs> Why? Why would we want to do that? <laughs> I think some good information came forward. I think I'm only going to really agree before I think we should revisit the idea of not creating a sub-district. Right. That's recommended by Mr. Gerald. Beyond that, some of these other details less of a concern. I would have to agree with uh, Mr. Rice about the parentheticals that I think that if you, if you start explaining a little bit and you don't have everything in there, then what you don't have in there could be considered not included. If you just set, take the parentheticals out, it would say the same thing. You mean the whole first paragraph, I'm talking paragraph about Tracy? under footnotes, 32. Mm -hmm. Oh, footnote. On the last page. Well, we have to have, because that'll go in the ordinance. And I understand that, but that's, that that's, wording has to go in the ordinance. No, I understand that. It is point, though. The point is, you don't have to say all those things. You can say, if you say unoccupied architectural appurtenances, you've said it all. So then when you start making the list and say, what's the last one, etc. As an example, let's put a water slide on the roof, right? Well, you didn't tell me I couldn't put up a 20-foot water slide because right. it's not listed here, right? That's my the point. point. Right, exactly. I understand your point and his point as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you see that as an issue? You didn't tell me, you know, it doesn't say I can't put up a water slide. Well, whatever other, like, who knows what's coming. I mean, who would have ever guessed anybody wanted to put cell phone antennas up there 20 years ago? Mm. Right? Right. If you just put it as all unoccupied architectural, I can't even say it, yes. 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 Um You don't leave yourself open to which you include. You could say stuff on the roof. Stuff <laughs> on the roof. Well, that's, that applies to both of those parentheticals. It's exactly. just to take the examples out. Right. That's all. Do you take issue with that? Anyone? No. Fair enough. You're probably going to have a little problem with with some members of the public trying to figure out what ar architectural appurtenances are. Well, I'm not going to tell them what they know. Well, so I know. You know, I'm not going to tell them definition. It's like... I know. I know. So you're doing it. The whole purpose of this is for the public. So the word, we make a motion to continue this to the next hearing? Trust me, anybody that's going to vote on it is going to know it. I can I can go along with that. Be okay with to make the change this? to the what we're calling the, the district, the district one, and then then shortening the uh, what's going to be on the ballot, and, uh, and, and make the change suggested by uh, mm -hmm. the building inspector. Um, right. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Any other editorial comments that Mark suggested? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Right. Aye. Now, just for clarification, the, the next hearing we can't make changes. Right. Okay. Other than Tyson's, or, or uh, yeah, it, right. So what point. we see on January 15th, we yeah. we'll see what yeah. essentially right. forward. That's it. It. Yeah. move forward to the ballot or not. And changes cannot be made at the deliberative session. That's correct. Right. The zoning article. One down and two to go. <coughs> Public hearings for zoning ordinance amendment uh, article item two. Amend article eight, uh, multifamily dwellings by adding wording that exempts proposed developments within the business seasonal zone district and proposed sub district from conforming uh, with standards contained in section 8.2.1 recreation area per dwelling unit 8.2.2 frontage 8.2.3. 40 foot building setback and 8.2.4, 25 foot driveway uh, parking area setback. Are you going to talk to this topic too, Mark? Yeah, uh, Ken, just briefly, the uh, opening paragraph to section 8.2, there is a reference in line 3 to 4 sub district. And uh, yeah. since you're now uh, in agreement that that can be described as uh, Business seasonal one. That's all I had to that. Beautiful. Okay. Anyone from the public wish to speak on this article four? Yeah, it's down here too. Yeah. So this is just to clarify. This is the same 
throw out the whole document. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll fix yeah. that. This is the same district that we're referring to. It's all of both the BS1, BS and the BS1. Right. Right. It's right. all right. of the BS1. Right. So it's more right. it's the, the, whole whole thing, the whole thing, including. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Good. Back to the board. Well, with, it, with the editorial, I mean, with the uh, adjustment of that, I, I'd make a motion to move this one to the to the uh, ballot. Second. I, I think actually you probably need, because even with the minor change, the subdistrict to BS1 that you would have another public hearing. Really? I think so. so change okay. the name. Save yourself the challenge. I, I'd make a motion. With Save it or create it. It's just a few <laughs> <laughs> We can't have the public hearing right now. We're in one. Where you having we're one? In. Now. We're, we're in. We're going to have another. You're making a change. You're making a change such that you would need a second public. All right. Hearing. Right. What about the people that are here right now that might want to speak on things? Hey, I was in the bathroom. Well, that's what guys. happens. <laughs> hey, you see what you, you see? What I missed? <laughs> we actually move fast. I'll, I'll second Tracy. Put your right, 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 second by right, Fran. Motion by Tracy. Second by Fran. All in favor. I, I'm going to abstain since I was not in the room at the time. Public <laughs> well, hearing for zoning ordinance amendments, uh, item number three tonight. Amend Article 2, District Section 2.1 to change portions of the Business B, Industrial I, Professional Office Residential POR, and Residential A, RA, Zoning District uh, uh, to Town Center Zoning Districts, GCH, DCN, PCS. Town Center District shall be created as, as Section 2.8 under Article 2 as separate districts with distinct zoning regulations for permitted use, conditional use, and dimensional requirements, parking, and building standards. I don't have anything. Um, Jack Meddy, our planning consultant, worked with us on developing uh, this proposal. Uh, couldn't be here tonight. Uh, I did provide the board a memo that he did to explain the changes that uh, we made based on the uh, planning board's input at the November 20th meeting on the uh, proposal. Uh, since that time, it's gone back to the advisory committee for their their input on uh, on the planning board's comments. So. I, I think I'd, I'd like to read this for the public. Please. Uh, from Jack, due to a previous commitment, I'll be unable to attend the December 18, 2013 Planning Board public hearing. This memo is meant to highlight changes to the Town Center District zoning draft since the previous public hearing in November. Planning Board received the final draft of the proposed Town Center zoning district for review prior to the December 18 public hearing. We should have received a marked up version of the last draft, which includes the changes um, that were made by the advisory committee. Changes are based in large part upon the comments from the November 20th, 2013 Planning Board public hearing. Changes are noted in the text by the following. Deleted sections are shown as strike through. Amendments, additions are indicated in bold, italicized text with yellow shading. Key changes include adjustments to the dimensional standards. The planning board expressed a concern about the small minimum lot sizes in the newly proposed subdistrict and the imposition of a maximum lot size since it might be restricted for landowners with large lots. The advisory committee altered the minimum lot size language, eliminating maximum lot sizes, created minimum setbacks, not maximum, and made the amount of field surface consistent with the proposed Conservation Commission sealed surface standards, page four, table one, dimensional standard. Another significant change <coughs> based on the comments from the planning board was to allow multiple buildings on a single lot greater than one acre in the historic center subdistrict through a conditional use permit process. The committee looked at the lot sizes in this subdistrict and determined that allowing this flexibility would only affect a small number of lots. An applicant choosing this option is subject to certain standards such as limited to building footprint. Page five notes the table of dimensional standard. 
And then finally, the advisory committee eliminated all references to parking fees and programs while retaining the option for public or lease spaces for proposed uses that cannot meet the town parking standard. Pages five and six, section I, parking. Lastly, the advisory committee spent a great deal of time discussing seriously and thoughtfully the various provisions of this new district. We hope the final product is satisfactory to the planning board and can now move to the town meeting warrant. The committee feels this change will have a positive impact on the town center and allow Hampton to work towards the vision of a pedestrian friendly, aesthetically pleasing downtown which can properly accommodate vehicular park. Thank you for your consideration. I go along with all that except changing the uh, uh, open space I think it I don't think you should put that in there. that shouldn't be in there because if it doesn't get voted now you've got two different sets of standards I think if, if it gets voted it applies in this district as well regardless if it's in the in this zoning change you following me yeah so I think that's unnecessary and, and it could be a hindrance thoughts on how we would deal with that I have um, well let me unfortunately the building inspector and I got this December 9th for the first time problems. and so you're going to get a lot of comments here from both me and the building inspector I just want to explain to you some of the problems that go to the core of this okay. and then uh, you've worked with this longer than, than we have so thank you I got a feeling we'll get a good hit up on that side of the head with a hammer. Someone get that red pen going. That's not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, as, as I said, um, you have two sets of comments. The first set is uh, is illegible because it's me. <laughs> and uh, that's because I was pre-med for a while. And so I picked up that part of the profession. And so... Uh, that's my excuse. Uh, the rest of them are the building inspector's legible comments, and he highlights them. Right. But I did meet today with, um, as I said, with attorney Peter Laughlin because uh, of the concern about the word subdistricts. Right. And I, I wanted to bring to your attention something that's fundamental to our zoning ordinance. In Article 3, the regulations, you have that a number of uses mentioned first one is single-family dwellings but there it goes on for many paragraphs and many boxes any use not specifically enumerated or defined in the following code is prohibited and so with that concept in mind we look at the things that are listed as permitted in on the second page and um, so there are what should be letter C, <coughs> as we got it, talks about what's permitted in the south subdistrict and the north subdistrict. And then letter D talks about what is permitted in, in the historic town center. What, what this does is this, we, we couldn't figure out initially whether this was an overlay or a whole new zone creation. Because what this nice map here, the proposed town center zoning district, shows what exists at the present. Right. Sorry. And in the south subdistrict, part of that is in an RA district mm -hmm. where single family, single family homes are allowed. And in the historic town center subdistrict, there's also a Dear piece man. that's yeah. in RA zone where single family mm -hmm. is allowed. If you look at this chart of permitted uses <laughs> under what should be letter C on the second page, single family dwellings is not listed as permit. So if we're consistent with Article 3, single family dwellings would be prohibited. So everything that is shaded in the what is now residence A would become non-conforming. Uh, same is true when you're talking about permitted uses in the historic center subdistrict which as I say has this portion that's in the RA zone so I'm hoping that the concepts can be kept consistent that what you're permitting what is not listed as permitted is prohibited mm. uh, so that's an important thing to keep in mind but as I say I, I was either Attorney Laughlin or myself 
uh, could understand whether you were using this as an overlay or whether this new designation was going to eliminate whatever is zoning. It would eliminate, yeah, the and, that's, and that's written in the notice. Okay, that needs to be very clear to people that they're yeah. going to be rezoned. Eliminate residence A, single family, is that the intent? That, that portion of the residence A would change to become town center south. Right, so you're going to tell people who own residences, single family residences now. They have a non conforming use. But I think if that's the intent, it should be stated that what is, what is not permitted is prohibited. Right. That needs to be stated as in Article 3. Um, because this is not being made part of Article 3, it's another section uh, in Section 2.8. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, you see a lot of little things in, in mine in terms of making everything, when you're listing like permitted uses in C on the second page, things are said to be plural. Each of these is plural, so I'm making them plural, everything plural, like bed and breakfast becomes bed and breakfast establishments. That's what that illegible word is. Yeah. And uh, adding an S to various things so that it will be consistent. Um, the building inspector noted that in, uh, in the box on uh, dimensional standards of maximum stories uh, feet that the maximum feet height would be 35 feet whereas he, he, he says here you realize you were changing the current allowed 50 foot height to three stories and 35 feet when this is posted as it is uh, what happens is that the building inspector cannot approve anything that would violate it Right. until the vote is taken. Right. And so he reminds me that Attorney Sari had, had a proposal that was coming in front of him for inside one of these areas that was going to be 50 feet in height, mm -hmm. and now, until the vote is taken, would yep. be prohibited. Yep. And so he wanted to call that to your attention. Um, just a few small things, if you don't mind. The, the very first uh, page has uh, purposes that references that this is designed for human scale. That, that's actually a pet peeve of attorney Laughlin. He, he, uh, he hates this human scale because it's planner speak. And uh, what does it really mean? And the word Godzilla there, as he says, his thought was, well, uh, you mean this isn't planned for Godzilla. Yeah. So that's his, he thinks human scale is a very fuzzy term and he doesn't like to use it. Is there an alternative? Um, I'll ask him if you like. He, he, I think he would just eliminate it. Yeah. Um, the third bullet has to do with uh, <coughs> something that was picked up by uh, Attorney Laughlin, myself, and the building inspector when there was this reference to uh, encouraging pedestrian-friendly amenities, including multiple ways for pedestrians. We weren't sure ways meant referred to a right-of-way or a, a planning technique. Or, or what the word ways referred to because you start out talking pedestrian friendly and then you mention ways for pedestrians and bicyclists. Mm -hmm. Attorney Laughlin's a bicyclist, so he actually liked that. <coughs> but um, <coughs> I'm not sure what was intended by the word ways. Mm -hmm. I think that's like paths, like paths. 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 Like paths. Paths. Right. The people are having to interpret this thing. Opportunities. And Probably. that's quality yes, landscaping. I, yeah, one Multiple. is concrete Multiple. and one Multiple. is I, I think theoretical. Exactly what, what I was looking at. Opportunities? Yes. Multiple. Multiple opportunities. For, for lack of a better word. Statement. These aren't requirements. It's just, or, this is setting the stage for the... Yes. I understand, but when the Board of Adjustment goes to considering variances, yes. they have to look to what is the purposes of the zoning to right. see if a variance would be counter to that. Yeah. So it's, it's well, important to be precise with Could be this. clearly stated, right. And what is quality landscaping? Uh, options could be another word for ways. Well, what options? Multiple options for pedestrians and bicyclists. 
think crosswalks, sidewalks, etc. Yeah. Options. Well, why can't you just say including? Well, we would safe have cra sorry, safe crosswalks. You don't even need the. Had I known that yeah. at the time that we were talking about this, that the word ways was an issue, yeah. I would have proposed options. And what is quality landscaping? What does that mean? How expensive we're, do your shrubs we're, we're, need we're to be? You're, you're, you're jumping around. I'm sorry, Mary. What's Louise. in the same line, Brenda? It's the same. That's the same bullet point. Quality landscape. No, the district will be used in conjunction with other regulations adopted by the town. She's talking about the same it says encourage pedestrian friendly amenities, including okay. multiple right. ways for pedestrians multiple and bicyclists. Multiple options for pedestrians, bicyclists, safe crosswalks, oh, sidewalks, effective okay. alleyways and lighting, and quality landscaping. Quality landscaping, in other words. No, oh, it's, it's vague. What the devil is quality landscaping? What, what's what's, I have what, what's and lousy trees landscaping? In my I don't know. That's what she's asking. That's, that's what I asked you. Oh, okay, well. It's a vague statement. Okay, so I guess that what we were trying to look for was for it to be an attractive way, a nice way, an alternative way for people to access the downtown. Right, but the but you're looking at wording here. The people are going to be reading. And what are they going to take away from it? And it's over. It's overly. I um, think that, that, that we're getting down to a point where we're, where we're actually picking apart. Yes. Little tiny things. Yeah. Like, if you take like, out the word quality and just say landscaping, that implies an, an intent to make an yeah. area attractive. Yeah. And maybe that would solve the that issue. That would. That would. That would be fine. That's all. That eliminate the it's quality okay word. Well, yeah. I mean. You know, you, you need. So you, are you all right with that, though? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of this is over talking, but yes, I mean that's a silly point, actually. Mark, do you have more points to be made? Yeah, I'm looking at page three under conditional uses in the historic center subdistrict. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reference in number one to multifamily dwellings above, and I'm assuming that means physically above non-residential use and then there's something in parentheses ownership units I'm not quite sure what that refers what to is that? well that was condominium but that could be rental too yeah we we actually yeah that that should should be reworded yeah because that what, what what's the idea it should in, include the, the apartment or condominium so that's a form of ownership i think the I, I, residential unit says it all multi-family dwellings you know, multi-family dwellings, how they're owned, it isn't, it yeah. isn't relevant. So yeah, scratch. you don't really even need it. Right. No, don't need it. So we'll scratch it. Yeah. A lot of this is too wordy. Yeah. That's how we start. We get too wordy and then we weed it down. But you had a, you um, had an individual working on this for a whole year. Not quite a whole year, but well, you're right. You had a whole committee working on it for a whole year. That's why it's people from the select board. <laughs> he gets people from the board. People from the select board, people from the, from the community, business stakeholders, <coughs> people from this board, people from other boards on town. Yeah. Here you got another sub district, too, up above that in the uh, E. Following uses are prohibited in the historic center sub district. Is that the same thing as the area one? That corresponds with Area 1 on the map, because my map says Area 1 on yeah, that. Yeah, there, there were two maps that came out. The one I got initially yeah. said Area. This the, one. the middle one was a historic town center subdistrict. Was yeah. that Mary Louise? Yeah. Mine says Area 1. Yeah, so this, this one I got just uh, ah. yesterday. So okay. uh, you can ignore where I was saying, does this correspond to Area what? Um, on the... Uh, the building inspector and I both picked up on the where it says on the I think it's the uh, fifth page in I guess uh, that starts about parking at the top. Yes. It says new construction resulting in additional square footage. Uh, the third line has a reference to something to the greatest extent possible. <laughs> that, that's a little bit fuzzy for a zoning ordinance <coughs> to say because. People need to know what is the requirement, right. and if they don't meet it, then they go to the Board of Adjustment for a variance. So, uh, 
Take it out. Next this this yep. was something that was wrestled with with the committee for a long time. Making notes. Yeah. It was not an easy. Well, I'm sure. It's obvious a lot of good work went into this and a lot of good thinking and. It was definitely a, a point of contention, and mm -hmm. we all batted it back and forth, and mm -hmm. and came up with the idea to put it there, and let's hear what the people have to speak about it, okay. where we're at right now. Yeah, number two in the in that uh, same thing talks about in order to facilitate village-like uses, there there then is a reference to the granting of a conditional use permit, and. Uh, I had, I had said using what standards. Always important when you're talking permits to set forth standards, and there is conditional use standards that are earlier in the document, two pages before. Mm -hmm. If that's what is being used as standards, I would just reference it there. That's what okay. And uh, in number three, the building inspector and I, uh, on the parking spaces, said where the agreement may have an expiration date, failure to renew or to provide other acceptable arrangements shall place the subject property in, it in <laughs> two ends, nonconformance with the parking requirements. And the building inspector who enforces this thing wrote, then what? Yeah. And um, my thought on this was underlining uh, the word subsequent action requiring subsequent action to satisfy. Uh, I don't know what, what, what there was in mind, but we need to spell something out there for uh, because something then becomes non-conforming. Um, what I tried to do in instances where parking is required, say if there was a development by uh, Mr. Rage's ownership where yeah. there was parking provided in a separate lot mm -hmm. in a different part of the beach mm -hmm. if there was a perpetual right for the the lot needing the parking to use parking over in the other place right. so there wasn't an expiration mm -hmm. yeah. um, well we talked about that we didn't want to go that route right didn't want to lock people we'll end up one of our actually you know if they if the their property gets sold. Exactly. That was one of our one of our worries was is if I lease three spaces from you as a private property owner who had three spaces that was within the three hundred foot requirement and you sold that property and a new person said, I don't want to lease those to you that would create a hardship for the business that had previously leased that space. That's where this came from. You have another problem here because it says, and I brought this up before, parking spaces may be leased from or provided under a written agreement by a private landowner. And once again, you have failed to take into account if you're talking about Route 1, are you talking about businesses on Route 1? If you expect a business to provide you with leased parking spaces, that's really uh, not practical because most insurance carriers will frown on, and I'm being very conservative in saying that, will frown on their client leasing spaces on the land that the insurance carrier is insuring with for all, other parties. With all due respect, Mary Louise, yeah. we were not looking at insurance. Well, you issues. have to look at insurance issues no, because we, you're expecting as, as the businesses on that area sorry, to provide leased spaces. That's not going to happen. One at a time. It's not going to happen. As a, a planning board, we are not looking at insurance problems. You're expecting people. No, we're yeah, not yeah. expecting anybody to do anything. We are proposing something. An opportunity. We're giving you an opportunity, an to idea on how to do, do this. Brendan. That's because you're an insurance agent. No, I'm just trying to have a practical, and I'm, I'm no longer connected with, with the insurance industry. I'm retired now, but what I'm trying to tell you is you're presenting an unrealistic expectation here. People are trying to pull parking facilities out of the thin air, but it's not going to happen because if you're, if you're a business on Route 1 and you happen to have a little extra space in your parking area sometimes, 
and you try leasing that space to someone else, your insurance company is probably going to come down on your head. And maybe you'll pass that, that cost Beyond on that issue. Leasing. No, no, I'm not talking about cost. The idea of having a downtown yes. that is vibrant and yes. usable and, and enjoyable to be in, right. there's plenty of parking there. Then we why as a town a have a giant parking facility. Right. On the west we don't side. want to then encourage people to be parking their cars on the front lawn of what limited space might be there. This isn't about cars. This is about creating a downtown. Think about some place you go where, you know, for every possibility of every seat that might be filled in a restaurant, there is not a parking space for every single chair in this type of environment. So forget about the insurance. Why are you bothering about the parking. referencing parking Because spaces? we have to have <laughs> an option. <laughs> this is, this is just... It's an idea. It's, it's something this to is put out what there. a dense situation And on the like. western side of Lafayette Road, there are enormous parking lots that can, in fact, if the owners of the parking lots are willing to, absorb some of that parking. So rather than raise your eyes to the sky because it doesn't seem to work I think it's a very unrealistic idea. picture well, to perhaps present it may be to the public. Right now. Well, I think it's we have to have options to go forward. Yeah, they're Mark, realistic. Go ahead with your observations of what's been written. Okay. Please. Under the building standards below, uh, there's a mention of traditional New England architecture and a dignified architectural identity. There, there will I don't know as you do architectural review at this point. This sort of gets you into it. Um, just as some examples of where that's been tried, um, Salem has, in, in a business district, said that you had to have buildings of architectural quality. Mm -hmm. And nobody knew what that meant, but it, it, it made for a whole lot of different roof looks. Yeah. And, uh, for, for one particular client I had in private practice, it meant a, a suit against the planning board for a while because it was not able to be understood. Another example is in Durham where the infamous uh, uh, three apartment buildings, one was purple, one was yellow, and one was a, an off color because the, the, it was a protest by one of the owners for the architectural standards. <laughs> which involved the paint colors. It didn't involve paint colors, but involved other things he didn't like. So if it isn't defined enough, you're going to get some things like there's three different colored buildings that are very strange. We have one on the corner of Winnicott and Ocean Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. Among others uptown. So, um, this originally had some architectural designs yeah. in it. Well, well, you've got some building standards. Down the thing here. is, we would have those in the site plan review right now. Right. We right. took them out of. Now uh, come in we, took out of here. we took them out of okay. here and put them into the site plan review regulations. Okay. Are they in there now? For simplicity. Yeah. No. Is this would incorporated? Be, if this was and adopted, saying that the standards will, will be in the site plan review. When? Review. If this is adopted at if town meeting, the, yeah, then we then at that then point the site plan that, that is correct. Can do without well, going to town town just meeting. Just, just take issue with the word dignified. No, but it's it's a fuzzy word. Yeah. It, what's one dignified to one isn't to another. If if you had, I think, I agree. If, if 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 you had something, you're asking the voters to vote on something where the standard will be in a regulation that they don't adopt, but you do. It becomes a. You, it's 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 a judgment call. Do you want the voters to to get a little bit more of an idea, of sure. or, or not? Yeah. What you mean? With them, with the regulation. <coughs> dignified. Just no, take that whole yes. portion off. Bad I agree with you, Ann. Can we just take that whole last portion off, Ann? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it needs to be... Traditional New England architecture is um, a lot easier to define and describe and identify than yeah. a dignified architectural <laughs> identity. Spirit so you want to use the word traditional? Expressing a dig will eliminate that. Just eliminate that line. As long as we uh, we're, we're substituting it with what? Is no, we're just taking it off at architecture. Yeah. architecture. Yeah. And ending it at architecture. Thank you. That's fine. 
Okay. And so uh, just at the last page, there's the reference to the existing town center village, and I just wasn't quite sure what was being referred to there. That's the, well, the, that, what we've considered <coughs> was <coughs> the village setting. That's right. That was going from Winnicott Road to Anne's Lane. Am I right? Rice Terrace. Or Rice Terrace, that's correct. Right. Um, trying to make it I mean you can stop it at High Street but then the Old Salt is, is right there and that's traditional town center as well what we tried to do was, was, was to take Route 1 from the, from the Route 1 bypass all the way through to around where the McDonald's is that's too much of a broad district the center of it being the the core of what we want to maintain as a traditional New England style town center. So therefore we subdivided it into three little districts and the one in the center we wrestled over what the right wording was because we have a village beach district, we have a village center, we, we, we don't want to call it a village center if it's going to be mixed up with the village beach. So it, it came out the way it did. Yeah, I guess maybe the elimination of the word village just helps there. Yeah. Yep. I think you're meaning you're as 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 good after since that's a very good explanation. You're meaning the 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 town center sub district. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, could I just say that when there when it when 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 verbally this uh, this particular district is being described as from here to Winnicott Road, it actually and this one is described as one hundred road to Rice Terrace. It's a little bit off. Yeah, here. it is. I've I've got the uh, the physical description. With the yeah, but the map so. needs to reflect it if people are going to have that posted um, so yeah, they can look at it. And, and the board has this. Uh, and I, I would propose, and, and we could amend section two point one, the, the, amend the zoning map, but also the a listing that has the districts and we're calling this a town center with the three districts and the map symbol could be town center historic town center north and town center south we don't need to call them sub districts that was what that we, we developed as we were developing this is that fit with the legal yeah, I, think, I think that's helpful and, and I do think uh, this this does take a bit more work, I'm sorry to say. Mm. Uh, I, I would like to make sure that when you mean the following uses are permitted, you mean that others are prohibited. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. if, if you don't mean that, then I... No, we do mean that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh. And, and also uh, to... Uh, I, I was the list. I'm sure was developed in a certain way, uh, and it was more than just what's there now. That's correct. Uh, to, if you to notice, there's, there's not a lot that's not permitted with, within the outer in area A and C, north and south. North and south. The concentration was not to stop people from doing business by any means but to just in the center limit it to a certain type of business and we didn't want to go with zone based uh, form based zoning because you could still put a as long as the building facade looked like all the rest of them you could still put whatever you wanted inside the building so we couldn't go with form based zoning um, Mark, did you did you mention under I, it's marked as uh, I I believe it, the E is crossed out under parking at the top. Did you mention that to the greatest extent possible? I, I did mention it. Yeah, because I'm uh, that should go. Should you either comply with the 
parking standards or the ordinance, or you don't. I think that's a good way to deal with it. I'm sorry, where, where exactly are we talking At the top of page right? 5, where it says parking, new construction resulting in additional square footage or an increase in residential units must comply with the parking standards as per, you should drop per, as in accordance with Article Roman 6, parking of the Hampton Zoning Ordinance. Uh, why would you put to the greatest extent possible? You either comply with it or you don't. I don't know that there's wiggle room in the... Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was the building inspector's concern about height. Did you want to... <laughs> Stick with the 35 feet, or realizing that 50 feet is what you have now. Sometimes you got to well, go up. Sometimes you got to come down. About this, right? right? Are we talking about yeah. just the center part? Well, no, it's so the all three, all three districts. Okay. Yeah. All three of them. I think that we were we were concentrating on the center when it came to the 35 slash three stories. That's my recollection. But yeah, the, you may have missed the last couple of meetings. That, the committee decided that all the three districts should be lower than 35. 35 feet. They are 35 That's feet. 50 currently. From 50 to 35. You mean it lowered in here to 35 feet? Lowered from the the existing business district requirement of 50 feet. You're confusing me because I thought Mark said the existing building height is 35 feet. 50. No, no. 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 no it's, it's 50. 50. 50 no. So the intent would be to lower it yes. via this yes, that, uh, we proposal. The building right. inspector had, had made From this. From 50 feet to 35 you, feet. Do we okay. want to do that? Do you want okay. to do that in all three? Okay. Yep. That being said, what, what's the thought process of right. under permitted uses to have two family dwellings and apartments of two units per building? Why don't you say multifamily? They would be a conditional use. Yeah. You want to hmm? have those as conditional uses rather than what? permitted uses. Number right. one and number oh, five. Right. 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 And, and again, it's, we're not eliminating anything. I have a question under Please permitted go. uses in the historic center. Yeah. Number um, 15, artist live <laughs> slash workspace yeah. that's um, business zone uh, the building I'm in has a number of artist studios right. in it but the live part yeah. what does that mean I guess it means that if you <coughs> want to sleep overnight <coughs> while you're working on your painting or your sculpture or your Water would, have, would have to be approved yeah. for a living. Right. right. I was going to say, doesn't, that, that, doesn't that conflict with? You know what? Well, it's no different than the dentist's office that they got the office on the side in of the house. building and they live over here. I mean, the art studios here and they have a, dwe a dwelling with a, adjacent. Okay, so yeah. so a, they would still have it to really means to the, live in the workspace. But they would still have to adhere to the town's normal mm -hmm. conditional uses of living spaces and. Hmm. Drop, drop to 16 too. Daycare for no more than three children. What is that? We chose that because we didn't want to have 15 children or 12 children. We didn't want four to eliminate children? all the they time. are even four, apparently. Or <laughs> four. Nor four. Right. <laughs> there, was, there was a discussion about... Why are you including daycare at all? Because there are daycare right on route one. places right there. Now, yeah, that's correct. In that, in the center district, pretty close. Yeah, we have the. I'm not talking about pretty close. I'm talking yeah, about yeah, the center yeah. district. Well, district. yeah, in the POR district, right around the corner. I'm not. Ta I'm talking about the center district okay. that I'm looking over at over. Let there. me rephrase it. Yes, thank you. If somebody was going to have, with with the, with the state, you're allowed to do daycare. Okay. Without a license. Without a license. Mm -hmm. With up to a certain amount of children. Okay. And we didn't want it to get into that this is going to be a daycare center because it's the historic sub-district. So we limited it to 
within how many students or how many children you, you care for at a time. Is that by the state standard? Is the state stipulate no more than three? Right. You now you go to seven. There's one by right, usually. For you, go to, you, go, you go up to seven, but that puts you into another category. So this would be a business, not a dwelling. No, you can do it in your home. Yes. Yeah, but this isn't a home. You're not talking about homes here. Well, we have here. homes down in, in the center district, and you can, in fact, take in children in your home. So uh, so a couple of those houses, the older houses that are along that street, you could you conceivably convert part of them. You don't even have to convert them. You could just take Well, you just children. use them as a right. daycare. Right. We wanted to limit it to three so that it didn't become a daycare center. Without having to be permitted. That's correct. Ah. I'd like to go to the public and see if anyone from the public would like to speak on this. Arthur? Hang on to those, Arthur. Don't drag them. This one has a point. Is that what you hope? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Arthur. You don't want to talk about pocket meters and uh, seawalls. <laughs> Arthur? Arthur, you have you got the earphones, you but you've lost your magnifier. In my pocket. No, they're not, Arthur. It's on the floor. And you're going to trip on it. Well, that's the other path. Okay. Uh, Art Moody. <clears throat> Boy, talk about complicated. Yes. Five different areas now we're going to have on Route 1, business district now. Yeah. You're going to have two north and south of these three things, and you're going to have three things. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Just a few things that were brought up. I, I didn't hear the resolution of uh, this kind of be on 15. Artists live slash workspace. Uh, my concern about that is if it's the only thing on the lot that the artist is living at, it's a single family and it's prohibited. <clears throat> Use. Yeah, I think it's a, a mixed use. Now there's another situation. Th there is another, alone maybe not, it isn't. Maybe it's the, there's an existing zoning ordinance. They prohibited single family in the business because they figured if there was another apartment, you have to put up with another apartment or multifamily, then you can put up with delivery people at 6 a.m. to the businesses unloading and noise and everything. Mm -hmm. But a single family wants much more quiet, so they prohibited. And then they came back <coughs> because a place like Morales, living above, mm -hmm. if the proprietor or the owner lives above the business, you can have it. Mm -hmm. That's in the ordinance now. And I guess if it's an artist, one artist living and working space, probably a for sale so on, then I guess it would be allowed under the current zoning for business. Mm. Yeah, we didn't get into the discussion. Okay, let me, <coughs> I just, this is the first time I've seen this since you opened this matter up. Should have to the meeting. Oh, this is the first printout we've had. Ah. We've had, we, we've oh, brought okay. this whole thing. No, no, I mean, we, we saw the we other. put out notices for the meetings constantly. Yeah. Every this, this, these, were, these were posted in the library, though, whole 10 pages. <laughs> and I hope that gets in the, all the changes get in the selectman's warrant, because you got to have a paper trail. And, and most of the 50, 60 years of zoning, we've had the entire ordinance change on the ballot except in the, up until the 60s when they actually did this on the floor at town meeting, believe it or not. Uh, okay, this is north and south sub-districts. Uh, cemeteries, now you have to go to the zoning board for special exception. That's not going to be required anymore because it's permitted use. Cemetery? Yeah. It's listed on here. It's because they were existing. Pardon? Because they were existing. There's none existing in these three. Uh, no, these yes, two. there are. Cemeteries? Right off of High Street. 
How far up High Street does this go? This, if, if, if you look at the, at the. It only goes to Toll Avenue. Yeah, That's well to before all, the all cemetery. All right. There are okay. no cemeteries in any of those districts. See, okay. see a few years ago, you yeah, made the POR district. You need to take it that off. It really was the historic district of the town. Mm -hmm. Toll Avenue south, uh, east to Mill Road, mm -hmm. including all of Academy Avenue, and went kind of road north to High Street. Mm -hmm. But you still don't have permitted uses. You still don't have dimensional requirements. You still don't have sign requirements for that district. Mm -hmm. I don't even. I didn't even get beyond. Did we have sign stuff for these three districts? No, we do. Yeah, that, that's one thing. And I, I was going to bring that up. We do need to. Uh, you have to have enough put in, on those pages to put all put these. In, and I was going to suggest, and I've got that in the version that's before you. Even when you go sideways, you're got not going to have enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the beach one still. Yeah. The, the new beach one. Well, the thinking is is to create this as a section itself, section 2.8. So we'd have the table that is shown in here in section 2.8. It wouldn't be in the table in Article 4. The dimensional requirements that would be included in 2.8 as it's shown in this. Well, one of those requirements is ordinance. you're reducing the business zone in the middle, the historic middle, mm -hmm. from, 50 to 100, from 100 to 50 feet. Mm -hmm. Did you mean to yeah. do that on this proposal? Okay. Yeah. There might be some lot split because of this if it gets passed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, the, man, the uh, town uh, attorney read the thing that begins Article 3, Use Regulation. Any use not specifically enumerated or defined in the following code is prohibited. Mm. <coughs> now, when the Southeast Regional Planning Commission redid our zoning, putting charts in, they left that out. Now, I had a heck of a time getting it back in. But I don't know how useful that is because we now have a large brewery getting ready to open up and we, they never went to the zoning board and it's not listed anywhere but a microbrewery had to go to the zoning board so I don't know uh, cemeteries they sh not going to be any cemeteries there the only cemeteries you can have in the state is non-profit that means religious uh, cemetery associations or government so I don't think you're going to have a government no one's going to put a cemetery in there. in there. Well, it does say it's prohibited in the it's historic in the zoning order center as for dead storage is prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, that's great. Really terrible. I'm okay. just trying to change the subject. <laughs> you can't. You can't have like the art fellows hall. You can't have elks clubs or anything. Yeah. The service clubs and and these this 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 north and south or historic center district. Yeah. In other words, you can't build an Odd Fellows house again. You certainly at 35 feet, the town tower for the clock wouldn't be able to go on. Uh, <coughs> auto dealer. Now, we went through a heck of a session on zoning amendments. They have no new or used auto dealers between Rice Terrace right. down the, uh, Park Avenue, mm -hmm. except right. for up to three cars or something right. like that. So now auto dealers are going to be allowed back in there. And I think it goes farther than that. I think it goes all the way over across the marsh. As yeah, far no, 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 that's yeah. all state. Oh, you could go over mm -hmm. the marsh. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> There's a house over there that they wanted to put a business in that was refused a year and a half ago. So. For auto dealers, yeah. Those repair. in the north and the south, we've already got auto dealers in the north. Yeah. North of Rice Terrace. In fact, you get five, what, 56? Uh, Dana, like Dana, he's, he's going to the south. He's going to the south. Yeah, he's, he's not an auto dealer. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not an uh, yeah, auto dealer. He's got Dana had to come in and get a variance. Yeah. 
There is okay, more than three more cars. Than three or across so you, yeah. I, I don't really it's think that's a very good thing to put in. This is a dreadful mess. This is a mess. Well, okay. In any it's way, a dreadful mess. Uh, Auto dealer, C cemeteries, <laughs> accessory use. What accessory? This is ridiculous. The, uh, okay, under the uh, town center. Is this all called the town center district? Yes. And all three things are called the town no. center? With no, they're not. Uh, it's it's all used in the historic subdistrict. Subdistrict of the town center district. There's no such thing as a subdistrict. It I says don't excluding. No, that that, that was not when we drafted this. When we drafted this, there was such a thing as subdistricts. This says area two A, area one, and area two B. That's correct. And, and, and I know, but then you've got a different designation yes. on that. It says you can have convenience stores excluding sale of motor vehicle fuel. So you got two empty former gas stations in this right thing. That means they can't be rebuilt. We once had an ordinance that excluded new gas stations within 1,000 or 2,000 feet, but that was taken out. But now, so now they're putting it back in, <laughs> you know, in effect. Mm -hmm. well, well, that would be dangerous. I think this is. This is. Bear in mind, Mr. Moody, that we're not putting anything in or not in. It's putting it up for the town and the town voters to consider and to vote on. It's a starting space. It's it's the first step. If the town no. says no, then we do it again. And if the town says no again in three years, then we do it again. Good grief. <laughs> What do you want to do? What do you mean, good grief? What, what do you do? Stand still and just let leaves fall around us? No, you've got a. a we have to move forward. Not like this. That's what a planning board does. It moves forward. Is this supposed to actually do something? It's supposed to get your attention and 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 vote on whether or not you like the proposal as it stands. And if you don't, then we'll try to do it again. <coughs> Yeah. Right now, this is a public hearing, as you know, for you to speak, and then we can make some changes for a second public hearing. After that point, we'll put it on a ballot, and if the town you says no, station, then we know that that's not what they're looking lane. for. It gives the planning board a direction in which to go forward. General zone. At that point, yeah. we will revisit, right. we relook, and we start over. So we run. And we yep. do it again. To put shop in, so we can't just stand there and let everything fall around without doing anything. It has. Uh, well, that, that's, that's, that's what we're why trying we're to change. Doing something. We have the same thing. Why we're trying to change it 100 years, years ago. ago. Thank you, Mr. Olson. It, right in the center. Basically, we do have a whole wall of buildings. Of stuff in the yeah. already. Just as it was 100 years ago. Understood. But that's why we're trying to make these changes now. I just wish that there'd been more time. No. For a building inspector, especially. Yeah, so every, everybody to, was welcome to these meetings. Decipher this. These meetings have been posted. The, uh, NSA mm -hmm. to decipher. Everybody is welcome. I'm sure you go on the website. I'm sure you look at the calendar. These committee meetings were posted. Oh, I, I, well in advance, I agree. And, you, I, and everybody has the opportunity to come down, sit, listen, and have input. And we would have listened to everything you had to say, rather than having to wait until the final moment. Was this was this a, a grant? Uh, yes. It was initially a grant. Under or DOT or what? RBC. Planning Commission. Well, they they don't provide the money. They no, make the they money. They funneled the grant through. From from no, no. RPC. No, it wasn't planning. Office of State what Energy and Planning. Does this make? It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, when you deal with the planning talk about the, 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 the Warren article. This is ridiculous. Where the money came from? What point? What? Well, I, I I don't know what, it what you're getting at. It's it real correct. It was a planning board. Move on with the warrant article. I, I don't agree. care where the money came from. It well, was a planning board initiative. Yes. 
And you were invited to town and along with everybody else in town. Okay. Yes. We've got to stop. Now, can we We've got to stop it. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't vote for it. It is kind of a horror show. Okay, thank you for your comments. We missed you, Fred. I'm glad you're back. Um, in a brief phrase, I think you're way too far into the weeds on this. Way too far into the weeds. All you're looking for, and I think Brennan has it right on, he's got to hit the nail right on the head. All you need to do with this thing is get the approval of the voters to establish some new designations of zoning areas within the town so that you can have something within which to work to preserve the historic nature of the town while still accommodating future growth and development. That's all it needs to say. All this other stuff which I've been hearing about mm -hmm. was just, yeah. it just went up in smoke. And with all due respect, Mr. Moody, you get off onto, into the weeds, into cemeteries, and, and stuff that's nowhere near this stuff in the middle of town. I would recommend that you rewrite this thing and sell a request of the voters to designate portions of the center of Hampton with new zoning so that you can more effectively protect the town. That's all you need to do. I think that's, that, that, that's plenty. The rest of it, I think you're way too far into the region. Way too far. Yeah. Anyone else from the public? Come on up, John. <laughs> Uh, John Nyan and um, representing Experience Hampton uh, this time around. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds, uh, but I can tell you that the committee that was uh, appointed uh, gave the opportunity for uh, Experience Hampton to participate in this study. And, and uh, so, so we thank you for that because I think it was really important. And, and I can tell you something that has come out of this in a very, very positive way. For the first time in a long time, at least until since I've been here in Hampton. The business community down along Lafayette Road feels like they're being heard. This committee <coughs> that was formed got their attention and then they participated. So we had individuals, businesses downtown that were participating in this whole effort. Now, sure, there might be some technicalities, some legal words, things that need to be worked out, but I think we need to look at a big picture here, and the big picture is that all of us are concerned with moving downtown forward to make it a friendly environment, make it an environment where people would like to go down and, and, and go and shop and, and, and visit and walk around, and I think you have the business community uh, down on Lafayette Road, uh, in all three districts, very supportive of this. So I, I, I just don't want you all to, to kind of lose track of that, and I know you won't, but the, the point is, I, I think that this is a very positive move forward, and yes, there might be some technicalities to be worked out, but I think the uh, the planning board needs to take a look at the big picture as Brendan and, and others have, have done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. the public back to the board but a technicality though I, I did want to point out the signage we did overlook uh, and I, I did talk to Jack about this how to include this and uh, we thought for now we could add it as K at the end signs and have signs within the town center district shall be allowed as permitted under Article 5 of the Zoning Ordinance and adhering to the requirements for the business district in Tables 1 and 2. Thank you. Thank you. Fran. Uh, Mark, I think, you know, we're looking at a January 15th. I think we need a substantially revised proposal mm -hmm. incorporating, you know, Mark's comments, the building inspector's comments, but I think we need to keep in mind the comments of both Mr. Rice and Mr. Nye, and at the end, of not losing sight of where we're going. So uh, we need to synthesize this thing into a, an understandable form, and we need to, you know, clean up the loose ends that, that got pointed out tonight. Um, so I would propose that we 
we get a revised uh, version for the January 15th meeting, hold another public hearing, and based on that public hearing, decide whether we want to go forward or not. Yes. You know I want to move this along as much as you do, but um, <laughs> but um, I, I have to applaud the effort. I really do. I, I think it's um, into the weeds or not into the weeds. There are some issues down there that even the merchants and the and the stakeholders have expressed concerns about. And here we do. Here we go to this effort, and then people want us to just start shooting with bullets. You know. So I, I'm not willing to just skip over this part. I mean, in the spirit of reaching across the aisle and getting rid of this and getting rid of that, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this language and the goal of this is is what's necessary down there. So I don't disagree, Fran, that we could revisit some of the language and some of the things that were pointed out tonight, but I'm not interested in not moving forward on this as a board as the right direction for the downtown. So that's fine. We'll push it till January 15th. And I keep hearing January 15th. Realizing that the next meeting would really be on the first. I'm assuming we're not meeting that day. No, New Year's. Come on. <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> we have about a part of a month to get the seven. some of this. Can we meet on the seventh? We could meet on the sure. I mean, that is the first non-holiday of the eighth. I'm sorry. So it is I don't the first non-holiday Wednesday of the month. I don't you could see by that time probably we can get you something so you can see what it looks like. Yeah. And then meet again the following week. Well, we You're doing your second later. public hearing on the 15th. Yeah, the next week is a public hearing. hearing. I, I'm not opposed to it. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I, you know, I don't want to drag anybody down here needlessly. It's not like we're, we, uh, we, we, we're supposed to do two a month. I so. think it's important <laughs> enough. I, I, I do too. certainly willing to do that. All right, uh, so on the 8th. Uh, we need to notice it to make just so we. Yeah. Uh, All right. So we have time to notice it. So we can read the eighth. Yes, and we do on the eighth. We've got. I've got to notice. All right, no, the vote. We're going to meet on the eighth. I've got to have it provided at least ten days prior to the fifteenth. We got to check the calendar to make sure there's no conflict with the eighth. So, that's fine. Um, Tracy's motion. Fran's second motion. Oh, we Fran's motion. I'm sorry. The fifteenth. And so we're going to. I talked about the public hearing on the 15th. Right. Yeah, the 8th would be a time where we would give you another draft so you wouldn't be seeing it for the first time on the 15th. Which is kind of the way I feel like I'm seeing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can appreciate you got it on the 9th. I'm getting it while we talk about it. I mean, I just think, I think it's the time there's more time. Unfortunately, we work under with these. Uh, well, the thing is, if we meet on the 8th and it's not a public hearing, we can't do anything. Well, at least, at least yeah. you're seeing, See the you're seeing the some of the people read it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see the fine-tuned language, yeah, if Tracy. We, if we have to have two meetings a month, and we don't meet until the 15th, when's the next time we meet? The 29th? No, the 8th. No, 8th. no, the 15th. No, the 15th. The 15th. We have to have a line on what we were in The 15th is the drop-dead date for the hearing. The 21st of January. Mm -hmm. yep, you're only having one one meeting, one we public move. hearing in January. Right. So the eighth would be an informal meeting to right. just discuss a redrafted version of it, but we really can't do that. Is there anything that stops us from having that? three public hearings? Okay. Right. If there's time. If there's time for all the noticing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, I, like I said, I don't want to come from either. Why? But it, it's, I don't mind coming. It's the question is, what can we do? Yeah. What can we can't do anything if it's not a public hearing. Let's just do it now. Wait a minute. Let's just adopt it as it's written. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is... <laughs> Mark says we can have three public hearings on it. Well, you need you have so notification we, problems. So you need, Why? Yeah, you need 14 well, days. Well, you need to check the room. Needs availability, and too. And 14 days time. between hearings. Yeah. That can't be too difficult to notice tomorrow. Well, it's don't like forget the deliberative session is February 1st. And the stuff all has to be printed up. 
Well, that's, that's the drop dead date. That doesn't that's matter that's anyway. It's just come in and we get shot 15 and we're dead in the water. I think we can synthesize it. You've only got two weeks with the hearing on the 15th. To get it all that's, but that's the legal date, so don't yeah. worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And clean up the technicality, synthesize it for the 15th. On the 8th, so that by the 15th we have a final draft for the people to come for a public hearing. Wow. Why couldn't we notice the 8th and the 15th? Is there a problem with that? By yeah. just have to check the schedule. For, okay. Did for you? The public to, to view. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. <coughs> I just stuck in them. Okay. That's the and problem. I, yeah. Okay, somebody do something. Just a, what did we decide? <laughs> gonna I think we should meet on the 8th. Okay. okay. So do I. Again, you can notify that that's within For your the paper, paper or wherever it has to be put. Just check the schedule to make is, sure the 8th is, is, is that a public hearing on the 8th? Yeah. No. <coughs> just work session. Right? Well, see, we're talking. They're different things. Why? Yeah, yeah, you're you're Mark's saying make it all th make three public. Yeah, but if you have to have 14 days between public hearings, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's true. This and, and the deliberative session is February 1st, and you need time to print this stuff so up. Yeah, so it would be a work session. It deliberate. would be a work session. Yeah, a work session. yeah it says okay. subsequent okay. public hearings yes. shall be held at least 14 days after the prior public hearing. And then have your final public hearing on the 15th. Right. Okay. So, so unfortunately, we'll still have a work session on the 8th. Work so session. We'll flesh some stuff out. I'm sure people will listen or arrive here and... You work all, session. And, and we're willing to listen to anybody's input on our work session. Work session. Yeah. Fran. But let me just understand the technicalities here. The 15th is going to be a public hearing. We have to notify that 10 days prior, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So that's what? That? January 5th? Yeah. yeah. But he's already got so that if we on. have a work session on the 8th and we make changes, we've notified, noticed something on the 5th. That we change on the eighth. How do we have a public hearing on it on the fifteenth? That's true. <laughs> we just run out of time. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. we got it. Every year in August, we say, "Oh, we're not going to let this happen. Yeah. We're not going to let this happen." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right up against I the clock at this point. <laughs> so I think that at that point, the public hearing—I mean, the work session—is. Useless. Well, if anything that we change on this on the eighth, if a draft it's, is it's if a draft is emailed to us or available in the town office before within the next week, we can look at it. I mean, even just look at it as individuals and see if we think that's acceptable. Then we can go ahead and notice it. Uh, Jamie wants to add the what the one piece at the end about the signs and whatever. You already decided that this was going to be on the fifteenth. Yeah, but you have to have something to present on the fifteenth. That's the final version. Right. But if Jamie gets us, we don't have a final version here because right. Jamie That's needs to add signs. That's why the work session on the eighth. But the only thing there won't be enough time. There won't be enough time to notice it. We have to notice that. Yeah. The fifteenth has to be noticed by the fifth. Right. So you need that. On right. The tip. You need your document by the fifth. Yeah. But if we can get an email with the proposed changes that Jamie's talking about, fine tuning a little bit and adding the signs at the end, at least we can email back to him and say, yuck, or it's great, or whatever, and then be prepared to take that. He'll still have time to make a couple of changes between then and the fifth and, and just go ahead and. Is that legally the better? I don't, I th the first, I understand if you're. Being averse to the first, I don't blame you there. <laughs> Something before the fifth, but not the first. I mean, you're not bound to meet on a. Oh yeah, and you're saying we could meet the second or third. Yeah, as a work session. Yeah. 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 The third is a Friday. Because you've got to have a final yeah. to second, take to the the second the is a third, saying the third is a Friday. Yeah. PRC meeting is on the second. PRC meeting is the afternoon yeah. of the second. Effectively, you're going to need it by the. Third, anyhow. You know it's about the fifth. Yeah. Fourth and fifth or Saturday, Sunday. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. What about the Wednesday in between? And it's New Year's. Please, please don't get angry with me. There isn't. Between Christmas and New Year's, he's talking about. Yeah. 
There isn't. 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 There
20 minutes. Mm. <laughs> you still should get rid of them. Yeah. Oh, nothing. nothing you want to keep nothing. all the business. Mm. 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 Still not done with zoning. Okay. Where are we at? Zoning. Changes to impervious. Changes to impervious. Oh, okay. Well, that's under mm. other business. Yeah, okay. Changes to the purpose service that was a service yeah. warrant article. I thought we were going to think. Oh, there's Jay. Hi, Jay. Um. Since we met with you last and um, presented the River Surface Warrant articles, we've met with the building inspector with the town attorney, and they've recommended some changes that we think are beneficial, so I'd like to present them to you folks. And I think you've seen copies of this, at least this evening. Yeah. Let me just go through them briefly, um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have along the way. Uh, the first one is the impervious surface definition, and basically what we did there was we deleted what was previously an intent and purpose portion of the definition. And we did that so that this conforms more to the standard definitions as found in our zoning ordinances. The definition itself is the same as we presented previously, and this is what is found um, in the, um, I can't remember the name of the article. It's in one of the RSAs. Um, it's uh, RSA 483-B colon 4, right. section 4B. Um, Parenthetically, Rye, the town of Rye, is uh, receiving two petition warrant articles on impervious surfaces oh, good. this year. And one of theirs is a definition of impervious surface that they're looking to add to their zoning articles. And their definition is almost word for word identical to ours. I do like the way you put on less designed to effectively absorb or infiltrate. That's a better description. Very that good. came from the state. I have no problem with it. Any other questions related to that uh, article? Oh, because of its, it's, it's design. It's design. Because I, well, it, because, but I'm not on the play. Right, you don't care about it. Yeah. Yeah. The next, the next um, changes are in the impervious surface reduction warrant article. Yep. Um, the major change there is that previously we were using it as a standard um, for defining what was a major and mi minor project, um, a 40% um, of current impervious coverage. And what we found out was that basically nobody really knew what that meant. Okay. Um, so we went to something uh, that we think is more common, which is that a project, a proposed project, will not constitute a substantial improvement which is defined as a project cost greater than 50% of the assessed value of the property. Um, this is a definition that the building department and the building inspector deals with all the time um, in deciding what the amount of um, uh, improvements need to be made on a particular structure depending on how big the project is on a cost basis. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought that this is a more reasonable reasonable approach to go with for impervious surface coverage also. Yeah. The same principle still applies that if a project is a relatively minor project, meaning it is not a substantial improvement, a person does not have to adhere to the new standard for their district. Um, they cannot increase the amount of impervious coverage that they've got, but they don't have to reduce it down to the new standard if they're above the the new standard but below the current standard. So That's if they're below 85% yeah. but above 60%, they can stay at whatever level they are at now currently. If it is a substantial improvement, then they're required to meet the new standard unless they can <coughs> demonstrate that stormwater is being managed on their property. Good. So they, there is an out with that. So that is, that's the significant change on that warrant. Order. That's well done, I think, Jay. So we need to have a second public hearing. 
Otherwise, so we so piggyback that on, on the 15th? On the 15th. So this will go on the 15th. Right. Yeah. Tracy. And I wanted to review this with you in anticipation that we could have a second public hearing on the 15th. Yeah. The property means uh, building and land. Property. 50% of the assessed value so of the property. You mean the whole parcel? Yes. The building and the building. Yes. Yeah. Both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Questions? Nope. Do we vote on that? I don't know if this hearing? requires a vote or not to have, hold a second public hearing on this. I'll, I'll move that we take the adjustments on both impervious surface, surface articles to the second public hearing on January 15th. Second. Motion by Mary Louise, second by Fran. All in favor? Opposed? Just before objection, I go, um, and, and I'm sorry I didn't mention this before you vote, but I don't think it's significant. There's it was brought up before that there is an issue with what footnotes are going where mm -hmm. in um, in Article 4. So there's a possibility that these footnote numbers may change. Yeah, that's tech. Yeah, whatever it is. 